Hello, welcome. It's hard lore time. What's up, Bo? Hey, buddy boy. And what a what an unbelievable guest we have this week. How about it? We had to come back hard as fuck after yeah. taking a week off. We took a week off. That's right. Let's. This man, he <laughs> he needs no introduction, but I'm gonna give him one. Um, modern modern legend, I would say. <sighs> like mm. like. King of of the gateway modern hardcore frontman. Am I wrong, Bo? No, I couldn't. I mean, gateway is in like, hey, here's here's the blueprint. You know? Yeah. What else is there of modern? Here's this thing that's gonna change your life. You know? There's Vogel, Vogel, you know, and <laughs> Mr. Pat Flynn. Thank you, Phyllis. Appreciate Thank that. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing great. Happy to talk the core. That's what I live for. Yeah. yeah. Uh we we were at we were all at Furnace Fest together. Couldn't make a mini one happen. Much rather have a regular one happen, to be frank. Absolutely. I, I, I did I swear to God, I looked for you guys. Oh and I, I found it. I found fucking nothing. I, I went <laughs> I think I, I think the Acacia strain was playing mm-hmm, and I yeah. went behind the stage he flashed the badge and i was like yeah. hey, i'm allowed to go back here yeah, i swear and they let me through well you found um, you didn't find anything we we found a bunch of ghosts so maybe that was mm. same time yeah. okay maybe maybe we were in an all spirit dimension while you came looking for us and we okay know it, we'll know. get to that yeah we'll, yeah, right, yeah. That's easy. Uh, we'll, we'll get the spirit dimensions pat don't worry um, so you know the premise is tour stories and when you talk to people like bands that i know hardcore bands that have played africa hmm. not too many um no. are, there, are there more than one yeah i yeah are cdc two? has literally played every <laughs> fucking inch of this content of that's, this world that's the fucking that's the roster well, have heart CDC. You, <laughs> Straight from the path played Africa. I know that. Wow. Okay. I think with stick to your guns too. I think that was like a hmm. wow. I think. I think. I could be wrong. I know I straight. Love, I love to learn. You know? <laughs> Backtrack went a lot of places. They did. As as did Foundation. I don't think they hit the African continent. But I don't continent. think they hit at, no, I no. think you're absolutely no. correct. They didn't so do that's, what this man did. We uh <laughs> that, the the summer that we did that just to stay on the CDC tip, um, <laughs> as I try to, <laughs> pretty much everywhere we would go, we would be like, we're fucking breaking barriers. Yeah. We yeah. are like the first to get here from the U.S. And we'd be like, oh, no, no, CDC was here like, like two weeks ago. And we're like, oh, fucking cool dudes chilling right here. All right. Wow. We got to, like, All right, cool. We got to the Chinese mainland. And, like, and they were like, we were like, are we like one of the first like – American hardcore bands ever to play here? They're like, actually, this band um, from Pennsylvania called CDC was here. We're like, oh, <laughs> dope. Uh, so then, like, we kept relegating it to like, we're the first straight edge hardcore. Ah, band. <laughs> there we go. Most importantly, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I can't believe you guys bear trapped CDC, man. Unbelievable. <laughs> Just follow their routing, hopping on the gig. <laughs> oh wait, is that a reference to the Massachusetts band oh, yeah. bear trap? Yeah. Oh wow, yeah, I, I didn't know you were aware. Yeah, oh, yeah. They, shout out Mikey from Bear Trap. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm aware. They did a tour like I remember talking to Mikey at one point and being like, hey man, you know that it's not 1980 anymore. That you you don't have to do the thing that like like Black Flag did, which is just like go out into the country and wait for a gig to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they 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 did that a lot. And I I kudos, kudos well, to they, them. I mean, they had some say some called them insane. <laughs> some crazy on this sh- some, some on this show but not maybe. insane <laughs> but and like their their gimmick was like they would look at another band's routing and be like all right this is what there we're doing is. on the east the yeah. only show i've ever booked in my entire life was bear trap in chicago they headlined wow. or hopped on they 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 headlined uh there was like a local band's demo release like i made it i made it cool it's a good gig it was a good gig. I was able to get him like five hundred bucks. Bear trap, five hundred wow. bucks. Yeah, Mike. So they Mike, was, love you. I didn't. I don't <laughs> think I paid local bands a dime. 
Well, how Because it was just like, that? you know, yeah, come on, I'm just going to, they're on the road. Yeah. Here you go. And it was a house show. It was great. 500 bucks at a house show. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. <sighs> packed. It was packed. Huge, man. It was great. Albion House, Chicago. Let's go back in time a little bit, Pat. Could we? Would you Would you mind if we did? <laughs> it's, let's do it. I'm a history pre, teacher. Pre-have heart. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's, well, how you, you teach Do you want to go pre-have heart? All right. I want to teach your history today. I want you to teach <laughs> me your history. Pre, are you were, are you born and bred in Boston? Uh, the the the, fa- the family is, mm-hmm. but I, I'm I'm an army brat. So my father was um, like me, me he too, was uh, technically. Mm. Oh really? My oh, no, my grandpa was like a military surgeon. So like my I'm the only Yank Yank in the whole family. Only one. Oh no, kidding. Connecticut. Oh, huh. so. Where yeah. where was Taylor born? North Carolina. Oh. Hmm. Southerner. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Where, like, where are like your family's roots? Dude. Miss, like roots, roots? You'll, or? you'll love this. Yeah, yeah. Tell him. Tell him. Brother, I'm like 30th generation American at this point, you know? <laughs> My roots are that rock that's well protected. Uh, you ever heard of it? Plymouth? Oh, <laughs> oh up in Plymouth? <laughs> yeah. The Plymouth that's rock? My yeah. Roots. Uh, no shit. Southern as uh, fuck, dude. That, that, all over the South, and then and then Connecticut for me. No, I've always just associated with just being a California boy. Yeah. Well, I got oh, I got oh one three four in my veins, man. I was born into it. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's a guitar yeah, thing. That's all right. It's a oh, guitar thing. You don't need. You, you, you listen. <laughs> just you're handsome as ever. You don't need to be known by riff. You know. <laughs> So well, pre, pre uh, have heart. Tell me, tell me, tell me the story, man. Uh, yeah, uh, maladjusted army brat moved around. Couldn't really relate. Uh, it had youngest. Uh, my my brother and sister had it kind of shittier than I did mm-hmm. in the sense of just like moving around. So they, I I have like this working theory that like uh, maladjusted like people who just like shift around around are like drawn to. They, they simply can't relate to like mainstream art or music. Yeah. So like, um, you know, even if it was like Guns N' Roses, my, my brother was like very early on. I look back on like, he was like, he had to have been like seven or eight. And he was listening to Guns N' Roses and then Nirvana came out and like, you know, he's like nine and he's like, yeah, this is the fucking shit. Mm-hmm. And passing it off to me and my sister, uh, likewise, was just sort of like, really into like it, it kind of blows my fucking mind she went on like this um summer school trip to paris and that was a summer that like i think like bell and sebastian put out like if you're feeling sinister and wow. um and 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 like it was just like plastered everywhere all around paris and like so she was like i'll get this and she came back with as like a middle schooler listening to like to cool indie rock. And so she dove deep into that. And mm. I, I knew that like what my brother and sister were listening to was not really normal. Cause my brother like then dove pretty deep into the, like kind of like real grunge world. He got like a scratch acid CD or something like that. Uh, uh, what else was he in on like a Swans record. I remember being like, oh, okay, well, this is he had, like, he was like blasting filth. And I'm like in the fifth grade listening to this. I'm like, this doesn't seem right. <laughs> show <laughs> me more. Seem... <laughs> this doesn't seem right. Just let me show me more. Yeah, I think I think on the back of filth, I think when you open the insert, it says like this record should only be played at like the highest volume possible on your record player. And so like my brother was like, okay. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you play that, and I just remember thinking like all the music that my friends like at this small Catholic school in Massachusetts listening to, uh, it, I, I think it sucks. Like it totally is terrible and I can't relate with it. And, um, so after, a, after moving around a bunch at the age of seven, my father retired. He was, um, Colin Powell's speechwriter in the, during desert storm. Oh, wow. Damn. Before yeah. like, while while Powell was hot. Yeah, yeah, but he, he didn't. He didn't Pete write the speech Powell. that, this is, that this sent is, us into yeah. uh, Iraq. <laughs> okay, so not the ones. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> my father yeah. did not write that one. Okay, um, he he had retired well before before that. Um, 
But he retires in 92. I'm like seven. We come back to Massachusetts. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in, uh, you know, south of Boston, is about 45 minutes south is this kind of gateway city called New Bedford. I grew up in a, from the, starting the age of seven, like in a small little town right outside New Bedford called the Cushnet. It doesn't have any stoplights. It's really fucking small. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I was just like went to this really sm- tiny, tiny Catholic school. My parents were raised like Irish Roman Catholic. And so New England, you know, man. Pretty much. Like, that, don't what ha- is it about New England and being Catholic? It's just if you, uh, they'll, I, it, they'll it's, boot I, you out if you don't. Irish, you know. Irish immigrants. Uh, <laughs> hatred for the English and Protestants sure. yeah. uh, of Irish immigrants, and, sure. <laughs> and like just, and also like the Catholic Church is like diehard passion to just kind of control people through guilt and shame and getting them young in the school. So, so <laughs> which they did quite well. Um, but uh, so we had like Music Day. It's just an example of like kind of my musical upbringing. It's pretty fucking cool in my opinion, but I was uh, in the sixth or six, it must've been the fifth or sixth grade. I, I loved The Crow growing up. Yeah. Oh, what a soundtrack. I yeah. know. The, the Well, what's his face from Indecision made t-shirts of, of, of the soundtrack. Or oddly did, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oddly and, from, from Incendiary just remade them, I think. I don't know if they made them together. Or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was I saying Indecision, uh, right? Did I say in decision? Yeah. They'll, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they say their own bands. I mean, they say it's each other's band's names. I, got I, it, I got see, it, when got I see it. Brian, I always talk talk about You're, the soundtrack. You are I'm doing trying to, great. I'm trying to get him to make a T-shirt for the Crow too. Oh, uh, <laughs> which I, I I think is it's not as good as the Crow One soundtrack, but it's it's got some hits. Is that's that the Edward one. Furlong one, or was he in the third one? Oh no, that, that's that's the good one. That, I think that's the crow like seven or something like that. <laughs> no. Who's There's oh, more Eric, than two. Uh, yeah, wow. the guy, the principal from the OC season three, is the crow <laughs> in the second one. It, it Vincent Perez it was on the OC. Okay, it's not Vincent Perez. <laughs> He's my. That must be four. <laughs> uh, Edward Furlong is uh, does a, an incredible job. I just want to put that out there for the public record. As like, as like, the crow, yeah, it, it just to knock. Dude, I job. love that you're right. Like you're using this platform. It is October. You're like, you know what? I'm gonna oh. justice for the crow sequels. <laughs> <laughs> but so I'm in uh, sixth grade. Mrs. Gannon is our music teacher. She also played the organ at mass that they would make us go to, and um, each week we got to bring in some music. And you know, I'm just fucking rocking the crow soundtrack. Uh, pretty frequently uh, and so I'm like alright I'm going to bring in my, my favorite song in the soundtrack is uh, by Nine Inch Nails it's a cover of uh, Joy Division's Dead Souls I put it on and I'm like, like this, this is it and it, like the opening is I mean perfectly honest like Joy Division wasn't exactly the most like musically advanced band like uh, he, you know in, into the ears of like you know an organ player so she's sure. like remember she was like this isn't music this is this isn't music at all. This is like she said something really disparaging. I remember just being like, "Oh fuck you, you fucking <laughs> asshole!" But now I look back on it, and I didn't even really know it was a Joy Division cover. But I can right. claim that in music class, I, I I brought in like a Joy Division song, and uh, yeah, you know, by like, like by like one of the most famous and rich guitar bands to like ever exist now. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. So you know, take that, Mrs. Gannon. She actually was a really sweet, sweet old lady, but she just really pissed me off that day. But anyway, so like that actually like kind of amplified my 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 love for, um, you know, left of center music. I guess you sure, could say, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and uh, so I just dove, I just dove deeper. I got, I mean, I had a pretty strong new metal phase. I blame Fuck yeah. the Crow too. That's soundtrack. shocking to me, honestly. Really? Yeah, I feel like. Like a lot of people say, I was born with uh, blood, sweat, and no tears up my ass. And I, I feel like I figured yeah, that would be SSD or something for you. You know, mm, came yes. out of the womb. When you know that... what I can say though? I actually mm. can say that in middle school, I I did have a sick of it all sweatshirt. See, and but I didn't well, know they I had a record up my ass, so I got you beat. <laughs> there you go. Um, I uh, yeah, I I just saw. They were on Fat Records at the time, and um, and uh, 
I saw the sweatshirt and I was like, I'm angry. I'll wear that. I'm sick and, of it all. And yeah, then every yeah. teacher yeah, the, you ever met after that was like, me too, man. Me too, buddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, then, then, it, then so it happened, I think like that same year, um, some dude shot up a college or an army base mm. wearing a sick of it all oh. t-shirt. And I don't think he was a fan of sick of it all either, but that, that that's real deal. You can look that up. Some dude wow. shot up an army base or military base wearing a sick of it all shirt. And my father, Lieutenant Colonel, retired, already already worried about his like black t-shirt, Marilyn Manson, nine inch nails mm-hmm. wearing son wow. now sees a fucking dude wearing a a, a shirt of the same band that of the hoodie that i was wearing so yeah. he, he he took that and he was like I, he's like you're not wearing this and i was like what what i just I just like the shirt and he was like no you you you're not allowed to do this and i was like oh wow. it was like the one thing that he wouldn't allow he hated so the, he, lieutenant colonel broke finally broke on one thing and it was a sick of it all shirt well, I think it was because of the the, the shooting. It makes yeah, that it tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and I get that. I'm a parent. I might be a little. If I had no idea about like whatever, if my son got into like, I don't know what's something I don't really know about right now. I don't really know about suicide. The, I mean the sign club. Yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah, yeah suicide. I'm gonna or kill even... my mom. <laughs> kill <laughs> my dad. <laughs> if, if he's or rocking like, that. Even even fucking the the yellow Fred Perry, you know, that got bastardized. Like, yeah. my yeah. you know, my mom would could see me wearing. Isn't that what those fucking guys wear? Wow, well, no. Yeah, but no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dead, dead. Uh, um, yeah so uh, that. But my my father was pretty cool. I, I plastered my. Um, there was the local video store that would like give out like posters, and I would I got like the Lost Highway, you know, movie poster and. Anything I just plastered my my room. I have there's a picture out there somewhere of me in my room, but no like, frames, just taped up posters. Mm-hmm. That was yeah, so and that was so good. Was I had a I had this fucking giant downward spiral. It I don't even know they I don't even know why they made them, but Newberry Comics, which is the big record store in Boston, mm-hmm. used to. Um, they don't do it anymore, but like they would give out posters that mm-hmm. are, are basically wallpaper, and I. I you, when you buy it, it would be like this thick, and you'd, you'd be walking out like a, with like a joust out of the store. <laughs> and I, you know, it was like, you know, like my birthday or something like that. And I was like, "Hey, Dad, I want to get this this poster." And he was like, oh, "All right." <laughs> it's like it's really depressing. It's a cover of Downward Spiral. My father's like, "Oh, what the hell's wrong with my son?" Yeah, like <laughs> you, you Ta- having a new metal phase is truly bending my. I, th- I think it's just uh, the time, right? Like it's just what was countercultural at the time. I pretty much, and it was like countercultural. You know what I mean? Counterparents yeah. is what I mean, really. Yeah, that's actually the probably the better way. My under, yeah. like, I didn't, I couldn't even define the word culture at the time, so it was really about like kind of seeing what my parents might not like. But my parents were really smart about it because they didn't, they didn't play their cards like. Like they didn't show me their cards. They didn't really show me that they hated what I was doing. So I, I had trouble figuring out how mm. to rebel. Sure. And so in very, I don't know if they planned this, but like I hand to God, I can remember the moment, but I had like a ball chain necklace and I had a ball chain wallet chain and like these giant Gen Co's. <laughs> I, I, I was like a total new Lord. And uh, I, I had, I um I think I had heard Damn It by Blink One Eighty Two, oh. and on the radio, and I like the college radio because it wasn't when that song came out it wasn't like everywhere everywhere right but it, yeah yeah the college radios would play and it was a little bit on MTV here and there, and I remember a couple months prior I found a CCS skateboarding magazine on the bus oh, dude absolutely we would share um I went to the Catholic school. In the same town was the public school and the public school kids were like into skateboarding mm. um and they want someone must have left a, a magazine i so i got it and i was like hey these people aren't like they don't look like you know the sisters of mercy you know they they don't look mm. like they're in skinny puppy and they're just they're just wearing t-shirt and jeans having a good time and i was like and they look cool skateboarding a couple weeks later i i hear 
I hear damn it. And it's like, it just has like this kind of casual, but still aggressive, but relatable lyrical content. And probably a week later, I looked in the mirror in the downstairs, my, my parents' house and I've got my ball chain necklace on. I think my hair was like parted down the middle and like all in black. And I remember just being like, you look like such a fucking loser. Wow. <laughs> and I would never say that to somebody else, but I just, I was like, it wasn't you. And it I wasn't liked you. It, yeah. It wasn't me. And I, I was just trying something else, but I like to think that like my father or my mother were like in the background being like, he's realizing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember what year that would have been? They, they let me do my thing. We're going to say, do you remember what year that would have been? Probably 90. I don't know. Whatever year, damn it, comes out. Yeah, when did damn it come out? Okay, it was like ninety-seven. Seven yeah, or six. yeah. And the other thing is, the Boston Globe did a little expose on what the hell was happening in Boston at the time. And at the time, it was like this crazy resurgence. It was like the rebirth of hardcore, Ten Yard Fight, In My Eyes, Ripe Brigade. All these bands were exploding in Boston, and so they Spotlight did. Spotlight did that, or just the Globe? It, I think it was a globe. Not it wasn't wow. wasn't spotlight. It was okay. like just and my mother showed it to me and she was like, "Hey, like are you kind of familiar with this this music?" And I was like, "Oh yeah." Like I I kind of heard whispers of like what Straight Edge was and um but uh so it was like kind of a perfect storm, but then like I then what really happened um was I went to um I started understanding that there was a like a like there was an unseen war taking place between who would go to Warp Tour and who would go to Ozfest. Ah, uh, it was really like a <laughs> Gaza Strip style conflict, I guess you could yeah, say. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Maybe that's a that's not a not, that's not a good oh, analogy. Yeah. That's, <laughs> well, you know, it was effective. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, I um, I was like. Because of that, I understood that that war. I was like, I have to take a side. I can't be caught in the fence here. You took a so side. I just, I just dived the fuck deep into the Epitaph and Fat Records catalog, mm -hmm. and through those bands, I'm starting to understand like, oh, there's this, there's this other even more kind of real and legit world of of, of punk and like, um, and I like I don't know if I can un like remember all the lyrics to crass but uh you know crass is do they owe us a living but uh, i'll give it a try and I, I i didn't go to school one day and i spent the entire day learning the lyrics to do they owe us a living by crass wow still i can still recite them but i was fucking committed and i didn't understand what the fuck he was talking about as like a lower middle class suburbanite in like yeah. kind of just like regular usa massachusetts um Funny and, that you uh, gave up your ball chain and middle part for crass, you know? Well, like it took the a, other side of the ball chain middle part. That, that's about right. It took a minute though. I, I, I got to crash through the field of epitaph and fat sure. records and um just kind of reading the epitaph inserts and just sort of seeing the imagery and being like, oh, there's something more legit. But then what bounced me out of like anarcho punk mm -hmm. was like the fact that like I couldn't understand the lyrical content and i wasn't having fun learning the lyrics to mm. uh, nagasaki nightmare yeah I, and <laughs> you'd never uh, been nuked you know you, you couldn't relate you know yeah it was tough i, I never had i was never a woman who had my was dragged out in the streets of paris and had my head shaved so yeah. I, I it's hard to relate when you're different 12. journey you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what so, so who's who's your old head that finally yeah. was like yeah hey hey yo kid let me show you something, you know? Who was the guy? Um, or guys? You, you, uh, just like uh, like this dude, this dude Joe from New Bedford. Uh, he, 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 I started going to shows. I went, well, I went to Warp Tour. Mm. And I was like, this kind of fucking sucks. Mm. And I hate, don't get me wrong, I hate Seven Dust. I'd like to see them die. But I saw everyone... <laughs> So everyone like walk by and flip them off, and I was like, "That's not cool. That's yeah, kind of that lame." Yeah, that sucks These... too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah. "These guys are just playing," and and that was the beginning of crossing the streams. It was the year that ah. two, um, Eminem played, 
Suicidal played. I think Kid Rock played. It was summer '99. I think oh, the same same summer Kid Rock played fucking Woodstock. Oh, yeah, crazy. that documentary was unbelievable. Man, how about that scene with Limp Bizkit playing? Basses comes out, double birds out. The whole world watching. I've been, I've just been dying to do that at a fiddlehead show. Just walk out, <laughs> double birds. Just, oh, One of the up? most incredible <laughs> things about that Kid Rock set is they, they like open with like a Uncle Cracker like DJ ten minute like medley. Yeah. Oh no kidding! And, and they play the one breakdown by Metallica, but they just fuck they up and stop. In front of you know eighty thousand people, everyone. It's literally like, and then they just like, just stop. Didn't wasn't Metallica playing like later that night or something like that too? I don't remember if they played ninety. They played ninety four. I don't know if they played ninety nine. Wait, at Woodstock or yeah, Woodstock ninety nine. Metallica played, I think, the Saturday night. Did they really? Then they just weren't in that documentary. Yeah, well, I think a lot. Or, of, there was like two I'm, documentaries: the Woodstock. I was a his, up in Metallica historian. Relax. Um, <laughs> so, what was the band then that Joe knew uh, Bedford? Well, Joe gave me a whole list. It was it was yeah. it was pretty great. He just um, this was the value of the kind of the internet already starting to show its power. Sure. But he it was like a aim 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 name. Yeah. yeah, it was like X subvert X after like a subhuman song or something like that. And uh, he, because uh, I was familiar with, uh, I was familiar with the like, Minor Threat, but I didn't like fully understand like who, who beyond that. I just knew that Minor Threat was was a goat. And he just sent me a list of just like you know, Negative Roach and uh, the Fix and uh, Circle Jerks and just the whole list. And um, you know, it's around summertime when my birthday is, my my my. Sweet father brought me to Newberry Comics. I think he was delighted that I wasn't bringing home a, a fucking canon sized poster of just like a depressing piece of art. <laughs> just a stack of uh, records and, uh, and CDs. And uh, I just got, I, I basically got everything that, that Joe listed. You know, every. So it was everything really, like said, at once to, to that kind of really brought you in. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and like, and then I, like, I was like, oh, these lyrics aren't that hard to remember. I get. For the most part, I get I understand the concepts, and I was fourteen at the time, so fourteen, fifteen. Um, but but uh, but but my love for like the new metal stuff stayed with me. So like eventually, when I started discovering like nineties hardcore, I was like, yeah. oh shit, this is yeah. like this is it. it. <laughs> like this is kind of bringing me back to like you know what I really liked. I love. I mean, I loved the heavy shit, but I just kind of I kind of felt weird about it. Embarrassed. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, some of those Limp Bizkit lyrics were a little. Oh, yeah. I mean, they all. That's the point, though. You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they, they they definitely knew how to, you know, like bring a vibe. But really you know, and like I just remember some corn songs. I was like, oh, this is like pretty intense. I remember listening to, <laughs> like, I remember listening to, what's that last song on the first record? And it's just like. Whew, uh, the the pretty you, you familiar with what I'm talking about here? Yeah, is it? It's about like it's it's a deep display of someone basically like just pouring out their trauma from childhood sex abuse, like and I remember, actual uh, sex abuse from his dad, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and I remember just being like, "Damn, I just like I I don't know if I have the emotional budget for this all the time, mm-hmm. like right now." And like, well said. Um. But you know, don't get me wrong. Like I'm, I'm down for the heavy, heavy lyrical content. But I, I just, um, not in that, not in that way for me. But so, but sure. I loved the the aggression and the sound. And so, discovering like '90s hardcore for the first time through really, I think, was a, I was a big fan of Outspoken. But like, I only had the first seven inch, which was like a pretty kind of straightforward, kind of youth crew sounding thing. And then the guitarist. Uh, K. Yasui joined Havard about fucking, two or three. The, the goat, yeah. dude. Oh, you, you, you're Love familiar. It. Oh, I'm familiar. <laughs> Big fan. He, he he showed me uh, Outspoken's The Current, and I I, I I couldn't believe my my fucking ears here. Is uh, K your old head? I think with 90s hardcore, he, wow. he basically wow. is. Breaking okay. news on hardcore here. <laughs> oh, talking about breaking news, when so Havard's like original, like, 
you know, support base was like pretty straightforward youth crew stews. And then Kay joins the band and we start writing with his influences. And I was, we were all totally for it. We, we had heard unreleased inside out songs mm. and I was like, holy shit, this is fucking so sick. Kay was down for it. So we just kind of started throwing it into that. But, you know, the seven inch before our first record is like, you know, it's pretty straightforward, but you would have thought that like we came out judging by the reaction of our original support base of like the youth crew stews, you would have thought that like, it, like we put out an acoustic album or something like wow. that. There was total vitriol from the Connecticut straight edge. Wow, they were, dude. they thought that we dropped the ball with our first LP that we were like trying to be a metal band or something like that. That's so like, crazy. That's like, so <laughs> funny. And, and, but this is really good to talk about because we talk about this a lot. Um, when it's like, People a lot of times assume that a band like and it does happen where a band comes out and within two years they're huge. But like that does not always happen. Seldom yeah. does it happen. And um I remember Have Heart playing Chicago at Pulaski Park District, the very near where I am, like on the seven inch, I believe. And Oh oh shit, yeah. Um long were, very did expired early. youth play that? Yeah, expired youth played it. And it was like the day after Posse numbers. Probably, probably, yeah. I, I, I wasn't allowed to travel. <laughs> but you know, it was. Um, I I don't even think I I went. To, full disclosure, I don't think I even went to that show for whatever reason. Something was going on, but it was like, you know, not a not a crazy show from you know from all accounts. Like well, there was no one there. That, you know, I didn't want to talk out of turn, <laughs> no. but yeah, that but, sounds you know, crazy. But but you know it, it's important to to talk about how it's like yeah half heart at one point and we'll get there play to ten thousand people. You sure did, fellas. And and you know <laughs> and then also at the beginning of this band's career it played to barely anyone. Zero and, in Chicago. Yeah. Our 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 show in Hong Kong had zero attendees. Yeah, I've been there, brother. <laughs> I've been there in Los Angeles. <laughs> As of I, <laughs> we've <laughs> cleaned toilets in Fresno for money, essentially. Oh, yeah, that makes <laughs> sense. Oh, my God. That's checks. Uh, CYC, was that the place, or was it pre-CYC? It was like a house show. I, remember, I just oh, remember okay. like being like, damn, what am I? I might I might be doing the wrong thing here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, that, I remember that that was our first time playing in Chicago. It was the day after Bosnian Numbers. Who was the singer? Ryan? He, he Ryan was the singer, yeah. Yeah. Um, I had known a couple... Chicago people, is there a band called Time or No Escape or no, not No Escape, uh, Time to Escape or Time Time to Die? Mm, not Time to Die. No Time Left. Does this sound <sighs> Chicago y? It does. Some kind of uh, time. Clock related band. Something, from yeah, something in there. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you're watching, let us know. <laughs> Mr. Caution. Mr. You, you, um, yeah, Caution. It was, it was one of his bands. I think they were supposed to play Boston and I was booking shows around Boston for a while. So touring bands hit me up and that was like our connection in Chicago. Okay. And that's how we got that show. We were en route to California and I, I, I'm positive numbers had been shut down. It's a big mm -hmm. fight. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember Ryan had some commentary about fighting at show. And, oh. But, um, you know, saying, can't do that. And, yeah <laughs> but and then i remember he said he looked at me like i have an additional microphone he oh wow nice. hey <laughs> remember he looked prop, at me he goes, prop comedy <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me and goes you guys are just watching uh i think it was expired youth he goes, you guys you're a positive force on the scene don't stop keep going and i was like fuck yeah man <laughs> oh, i'm with you i'm with you soldier and uh <laughs> and uh yeah so that was you know, I think I—I I mean, I don't keep in touch with Ryan that much, but um, mm -hmm. you know, if I saw him, I'd try and catch up. Yeah, two, but we played two. to nobody in Chicago. Eventually, we did pretty well in Chicago. Yes. Yeah, I bet you I did. Mean, I have did. two two questions. Hit me. Well, I guess one is more of just a statement because I was going to talk about that. Like, when you think of Have Heart, you might not think it's spin kick music, but I let me tell you, <sighs> certified, it's spin kick approved for one. <laughs> Thank oh, yeah. you. It's yeah. Like, uh, look, I, this is objective. I'm speaking objectively. I appreciate that. When we wrote um, 
the first kind of spin, I remember when we wrote it, we were like, oh boy, we, yeah. might, get, we might get some spin kickers in this. You did, and you got them. <laughs> We, uh, was it Machinist? I think that was, that was yeah. the first. Machinist, like, hard as fuck, man. Very hard. That's we a like, good song. And then the, it, there's like the interlude or something. It's just fucking shit. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know what's up. Yeah. Hard we're, as we're, fuck, dude. That that's that that's K. It's K and and Costa who were like. I just knew coming. that's why. That's why he and I are friends. Yeah, it makes sense. We have that in common. We have in common. Uh, <laughs> I remember. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Go no, on. go ahead, Joe. Johan. Um, we played Burning Fight, the Burning oh, Fight yeah. Festival yeah. in Chicago at the Metro. Harm's Way played one day very early on, and then Convicted, who toured eventually with Half Heart, oh yeah, played another day. And I remember this was like Half Heart was doing what well, like well at this point, like Half Heart was like going full full steam. Mm-hmm. And we were talking to you guys, and you were like, "Yeah, we're about to like do a world tour." Yeah, and this and this was like this is initially like as soon as it was like oh like pats down to, to do an episode. This is what I was just dying to talk to you about. Is like I saw someone had like the routing or something when we like looked at it and it was like the craziest thing I had ever seen. Was like oh you guys are playing everywhere like you you're actually playing Africa. Yeah, and a, yeah. A, 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 Sure enough, a few months later or a year later or whatever, the video comes out of you guys playing in, in front of school kids yeah. somewhere in Africa. And I know we're kind of skipping it ahead, but no, I, no, I, no, yeah. I got to know. Please tell me about how that happened and how that came to fruition, what that was like. Yeah, there, there, there's a good story there. Could I just add one one to that about about us in Chicago that at that very moment? Yeah. So, so like, I... I, I Obviously, for international stuff, we'd have people who would, you know, book the shows. But I would have to contact them and like put trust in them, and you know, do those types of things that are kind of anxiety-inducing, especially when you have like friends depending on you, and like you're handling their money essentially, mm. and, and no one has money, so it's <laughs> that much more uh, stressful. But I, I, I handled all of that, and I think I did a pretty good job. We never asked Bridge Nine for a single dollar. We were always like ahead, and we always like we came back being able to pay our rent and then have a little bit on the side. I did. And I, hand, I, I booked all of the flights, everything, got them right every single time. So we're we're setting up to do this crazy world tour. You know, every single flight has to be linked, and we play a couple shows with Bane out to. Burning fight, the the night big nineties fest and reunion, and um, and we're looking out at the routing and said, I I was like, we're about to like really dive in. We're not coming back for like seven months, essentially. Straight and up, it, Kyle. It was like seven months. Oh, I yeah. it. <laughs> it, it, it was it was nuts. And I probably went to the tour. Tell you, yeah, tell right. You what? Yeah. And so like I was like, why, why don't we have like before we like really like leave the states for the next five or six months and then before we come back for like our final month and a half u.s tour we'll have a day off you know in chicago we never really got to see chicago that much and so like at least that's what i thought it was in my head so we get the burning fire i'm like all right so we get time off and then bane hits us up and they're like hey uh we're playing indianapolis or somewhere in indiana i think just somewhere in indiana that's not that's about like maybe like two hours outside of chicago Do you guys want to jump on we're like yeah, fuck Chicago. Let's just play. Let's let's jump on a gig. So like, we played. We drive to this. You know, just kind of very random part of Indiana. Show was fucking great, and you know we're just driving back, and we pull over at uh, a McDonald's in you know. There we go. Nowhereville, Illinois, Indiana. Now we're talking. And we're just in the parking lot, blasting Machine Head, just like you know, let letting freedom ring. You know what I'm. You know right, what I'm saying. Man. With a Baja blast? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it was about that time the Baja was going. Um, well, no, that, 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 that's Taco Bell. We were at Yeah, but it Let is. Freedom Rain with the Baja blast. With the oh, with the Baja it's, blast. It, it, oh, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Never really did You know, that. this is what it is. <laughs> um, so, like, this is going to matter for the story. So, so the, the, here, here's the guy who's, like, booked all the tours, done a nice job, always gotten us everywhere we need to be. And then 
We get to the airport and I'm rolling up. I'm like, man, because we knew we were breaking up too. We were like, this is this is our last final hurrah. And I was like, you know, was that this announced is at the time? It wasn't announced, and we were not planning. We were planning on just simply not announcing it until like we were done with the tour, and then we would just do something. I, I can explain why we ended up kind of announcing it, but um, so we, I, I get up, I go right up to like the front desk at O'Hare. And I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm flying to flying to Beijing. <laughs> you know, I'm feeling like, you know, because I like didn't really come from a whole lot of money, and I'm like yeah. bringing my fucking band to like China, and I, yeah, I'm feeling yeah. I'm like fuck, like this isn't some school trip. My parents aren't paying for this. Like I'm not on some shitty vacation. Like I, this is like I did. We did this. Yeah. yeah. And the lady goes, yeah, that flight left yesterday. 24 hours ago you got the date wrong <laughs> i was oh. like holy fucking shit are you serious she's like yeah and then she goes yeah you're also at the wrong airline uh so <laughs> like a double like <laughs> fucking idiot and like wow. so then she says to me she goes and luckily i went to the wrong place she goes here's what you need to do you need to come up with a story that isn't just a demonstration of you being an idiot right. you need to say that you were robbed you need to really work the emotional heartstrings of the people at that airline. Right. Uh, so turns out we did that. Oh, I had to like go up to the rest four guys and say like, Hey, um, so I really fucked up pretty bad this time. This might be like a, a big hole in our pocket here. Cause I don't know if we're going to get refunded at all. So you just need to look extremely depressed as we walk over there. And why don't you're you hide me. all <laughs> what's that? You're, you're telling me you lied. Big time. Pat like, Flynn lies. Don't worry. I went right to confession when I got back to <laughs> okay. St. Francis. I'm going to say, man. <laughs> the so don't cleansed. fly in New Bedford. <laughs> um, so I go, to the, I go to the front desk and I tell them, like, hey, we were robbed. We, we missed our flight. We're a band. This is all we have. And they're like, people, good people of O'Hare were like, we'll take care of you. And then and we were supposed to have like two different like fucking layovers or whatever. But anyway... We had a direct flight to Beijing. Oh my Whoa, goodness! Yeah, you made nothing. up time. Yeah. Well, you that, Doc Browned. Well, we still there. we were still behind. We we basically missed, like the flight didn't leave till much later, but it was direct. Okay. Okay. But we missed the day when we got there. The the, the Paul the the the, the kid uh, the the kid from China who was booked our mainland tour was like, oh man. man. I'm really sorry that you guys are getting here today. Like, it's a real shame because yesterday, if you had been here on time, um, you would have been, um, we would have been at the Great Wall of China. And I was like, oh. And then I was like doing the math. And I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I was like at a fucking McDonald's in the middle of the country blasting Machine Head when I could have like been seeing like the fucking Great Wall of China. <laughs> well, some, some would prefer <laughs> what you did. Don't be wrong. It was a, it was a good hangout session for sure. But um, can I, can we yeah. pull up that tour routing while you're talking about it? You I can, would just yeah, love to sure, see yeah. that. Switch. What year was that, Pat? Do you remember? 2009. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so sure. one of the reasons why we ended up announcing it is because we played all of China and like we weren't known at all in China. In fact, it was oddly enough, like we, we played in Guangzhou, which was like a big industrial part of China back in the day, like in the 1400s. But, um, and it still is pretty industrialized, but um, we didn't expect anyone to be there. And it was our biggest show. We had like 400 people. They had never really even heard hardcore before. Oh, right? or, it's just so American we music. It was, it was, Live it was awesome. Live American music. And it was amazing because like the, the bodily response, there was no code to how they, they were responding like bodily. And we had played at some shows and they were, they were kind of sparsely attended. So like, but this was like, it was kind of like tightly packed. It was like 400 or 500 people there, all tightly packed. And it was like the entire crowd was having like a genuine response. And we were like, holy shit, if this is what, this is what Guangzhou is like, like Hong Kong's just going to be fucking insane because it's had more access to like, you know, like Western influence. And there's a greater, we were told it's greater likelihood. Um, and zero people showed up. Wow. <laughs> like absolute zero. Oh. So, <laughs> Like it was, it was definitely like at the top, it was like the top of like some like giant hill in, in Hong Kong. So no one shows up. And then, so it wasn't like that much of a bummer if we would play and knowing that we we're going to break up. But then we, in Southeast Asia, th that, those were like 
to this day some of the best shows we, we've ever played and you know yeah. like more meaningful than some of like the quote-unquote craziestly uh, attended shows yeah um but uh we started feeling kind of bad because like people would be like you got to come back and these were kids who would like really kind of network and pull everything together mm -hmm. with, with, with like pretty much very little that they had and also at odds with like a very kind of aggressive quasi authoritarian state government that wasn't into it. Yeah. So and they'd be like, we can't wait for you to come back. And then like, I think after our Bangkok show, we were just like, this kind of feels like shit being like, yeah, see you next year. And then yeah, we're lying. Yeah. Lied and, again. Lied again. Don't worry. You Father Paul heard, heard the sins. <laughs> oh uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, so we ended up saying, and it, it was, I'm glad we did because it kind of made for, um, I don't know, a, you know, if you know something's dying, you know, go ahead and check it out. And it was, uh, it's just it was, so crazy to me though, that, that, that you guys think that it was dying at any point when like you have heart is the example that people use of like going out on top, you know, I, I that, that was part of it. You know, we kind of in, in, in Boston, that was just like, like the norm. You know, tenure fight was at the top of their game, broke up. In my eyes, top of the game, broke up. American Nightmare, pretty much at the top of the game, broke up. Mental was at the top of the game, broke up. Suicide But foul. you were at the top of a game that had never been reached by anyone. Right, Boston none of those aside. bands had done this. Yeah, yeah, it, it was definitely, it, it was, it was definitely cool. But we just, we had also seen, we were also lucky enough to kind of witness like the Canaries going into the coal mine of reunions ah uh, yes and just sort of seeing like how that can go bad and also like you know it was also like 2009 you know is it it only really like what like the 30th year of hardcore i guess yeah so like wow you what know there was crazy way crazy. to put it yeah wow. yeah and so like there were some bands who were like like i remember like i mean it was like doa like some like the freeze played a show I remember being like, they never broke up. Oh, or like uh, yeah. some bands, I, I forget who, like they just, just had kept playing and didn't stop. And it was seemed so hard to, uh, to do that. Right. So we were added on with like this weird tradition of just sort of leaving at the top of like your time, but also like, uh, I'll be full total transparency is we, we, we could also read the writing on the wall and we kind of had an understanding of like the trends of hardcore and, and you know, we played United blood in 2008 and totally, no, no, 2007 and just like ripped the house down. Yeah. Mm. A, a year later we play and it was to fucking crickets. And how Literally. was the trapped under ice set? Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah, right. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, the, the, the seven inch comes out and we were, those are like our, our our boys and so like yeah. we it, there was no beef there but, and we were at united blood by way of a tour that we were doing with them and i think like polar bear club or something like that oh, um crazy tour and and it was a it was a great tour but i remember after that set this is i think spring 2009 we were like hey we did two fucking lps we've toured we, we've toured like m like most of the where the world offers hardcore shows you know, and like also like, you know, maybe we want to do some other music and like we were thinking like what would a third LP look like and like it can either go extremely heavy or it can kind of go in the world of I guess like where like Fiddlehead kind of is. Mm -hmm. and, okay. And and that really I don't think had been totally figured out. Title Fight was just kind of like getting off mm -hmm. the ground and people were starting to be like, hey, maybe this isn't a pop punk band and it's kind of more. more and like this kind of Sam Miami world of like punk hardcore. And so like they, I think they just totally sort of figured that out. But like, you know, so like, you know, we were all pretty like tight and close friends and my, my, my best of best friends, Ryan and I, we were, we, we were, we had been doing the band since, since day one. And like, we were just uh, like, Everyone's getting pissed off at each other all the time. So we're like, let's just mm. let's save our friendships and just kind of call it a day. Um, God, how huge, incredibly like w wise. So <laughs> like, I mean, self aware to the yeah, point where like about things that you can't even tell people. Isn't know? it funny too that like United Blood really was? 
I remember uh, one, it was, I can't remember which year it was, 2009 or 10, where Foundation played and they had the they had the set of the weekend. Probably 10, because yeah. like, 9 and, was the Bad Seed set. Ah, uh, yes. 9 was Good incredible. Memory. That was the Cro-Mags, the Cro-Mag army. Mm. That, that one was fucking amazing. But yeah, I think you're right, Colin. Um, but it, United Blood was like the fest that was like the the seal of approval on like, oh, these are the this is the band. Here's it was the, the band. tastemaker of yeah. the year. It was the yeah. annual. It's like, you know, when I buy a new jacket once the a year. The overture, if you That will. becomes my <laughs> meat for the year. You know, <laughs> United Blood is the jacket. Yeah. So it we is. got China, 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 five Chinas, mm-hmm. Manila, which I've heard is crazy, but that's not 2009 that's you know. there was a it was a good ass fucking show I and mean, it wasn't like a million people there but i think there was probably like 300 people there and it was I just mean, always fucking crazy it was like yeah it's it was nuts <laughs> when you're playing when you're playing to music fans is when you like just re- like we want to see some live music that's mm-hmm. when you really see that hardcore maybe not for half heart because you motherfuckers were singing but it's the only genre where people aren't fighting to be right in front of you. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Generally. Now, you know, for, for a fiddlehead, it's maybe you can't relate because, again, motherfuckers be singing. <laughs> but it's it's like I was I just went to that Aftershock Fest this weekend where it was just like Kiss and shit played, you know. Uh-huh. And it, to, to be able to see the stage, you have to, oh, you have yeah. to be ass to ankles with somebody, you know. Totally. Yeah. Uh, so uh, all the, the, I'm just like I can yeah. remember each and every single the Singapore show is great. I um I was actually before we did this I almost I almost died in the shower before this. Um, did you slip? I almost slipped yesterday. It's fucked up, man. I I my oh, man. cursing me. It, it was after uh, tubby time, I, and we had this like mat that our kids sit on when they're taking a tub. And I pulled it off. It's got like suction cups on it, yeah. and I got right in, and it's like super slippery underneath the super. mat. I, <laughs> I straight up almost fuck. I stubbed my toe. It hurts like shit right now. But I bring that up because in Singapore, is a good little story. Fucking asshole bandmates uh, were crossing from Mal- Malaysia into Singapore, and uh, I got these giant fucking merch bags, dragging them. None of these dickheads are helping me out. We have to go through the customs, going left and right, left and right. They're just having a fucking great old time, you know, completely disregarding that, like, you know, I'm dragging them. And I got so fucking pissed and like a total child, I, I was like, I'm, I just like went to kick the, the merch bag at full fucking force because I thought it was just like hoodies. Turns out um, our, our drummer's like the pedal, the kick pedal, like the little metal plate was oh, exactly yeah. there. So it was like, Dunk. right in there. My toe went completely <laughs> black, like completely black. I, I like, wow. I didn't, I was like, oh fuck, I think I really fucked it up. Oh, whatever. I you just have felt, to no sell it. Yeah, you, you I really can't. instantly <laughs> yeah. felt stupid because I was like trying to demonstrate like how pissed I was, and I just like made a fool of myself. So then we get on the bus to go in, uh, further into Singapore, and I take my shoe off. My whole fucking toe is black, and this is like I don't know what That's is just that blood like blood, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just immediate just full deep of blood. bruising. Yeah. yeah, but if you look at the routing of it, that's like one of the first. It's like uh, first of like. Like yeah, first of shows or something like that. <laughs> quite a, quite a few <laughs> how, shows. How long was Did, it black? It, luckily, it was only only it was only like that for about like two or three weeks, I would say. But like, yeah, but that's like two weeks. That's just like, a I'm coming, guys. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. dude, it, Colin in in Singapore, they're so um, crazy about what you bring into the country that they have mm-hmm. customs at the gate that you land in. So you wow. get off the plane. And immediately, at least when we went there, yeah. straight into customs, and they are they go through all your shit, and that's when you get those cards that says like, "Tobacco is punishable by death." Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Tobacco? Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't fuck around. Guess gum, I can't go there. Yeah. Gum is illegal. Gum is straight gum? up. Gum? Okay, now this is my kind of place. <laughs> Streets are clean. Fucking, I got like a gum? gum. I got a gum phobia straight up, dude. What's the phobia? I I feel like if it touches me, I'm gonna get sick. Damn. Like, if I'm peeing in a urinal and somebody spit gum in there, I'll go to a different urinal. Because what if it splashes back at me? Yeah. I got got somebody else's gum on me. That's disgusting. (laughs) I I am, if I sound weird for anyone listening, I'm super sick right now. Because I went to TwitchCon and I died. 
You went to the, and I don't mean to make this political because I don't mean it political, but there was a big controversy about TwitchCon not having masks. So no, they made, so they changed yeah. it to be like heavily enforced. Mandatory. Yep. yep. And you're you fucked had to go, up. You had to go and get like a wristband that showed you had a negative test or a, your vaccination. It's crazy, man. Cause Which I was, was fine. surrounded by mutants. Did you hear about, uh, <laughs> not, not to derail, but. We didn't even talk about current events. Did you hear about the other controversy that happened? Controversy? Controversy? Was there was what like the a that? American Gladiators like foam pit <laughs> where you would stand on a platform and knock someone off. And a certain adult film star, Adriana Chekshashk, I can't remember her oh, last sure. name, how you say it, jumped off, landed, like jumped off, did a toe touch and just like fell on her ass into the foam pit and broke her back in two places oh, wow. and is in the hospital getting surgery. Wow. Like that weekend. She's still bad. Wor workers comp, brother. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But brutal. I got really sick. I slept for 17 hours the other night. I basically go to a super spreader event <laughs> for a living every day. It's like 2,600 kids really in my school. You really do, man. Dude, <laughs> so, yeah. Or do you man. teach high school? Yeah. My stepdad is retiring from teaching high school. This oh, school, no so. kidding. Yeah. I, I'm... I'm Kind of looking forward to that. Yeah. You got, what, J James, years the, left or so? The, oh, I'm sorry. You good? The singer in Harm's Way is also a high school teacher. And he, he like, is? Yeah. And he often says, like, I've probably had COVID like five times. Like, there's no way. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, just totally. kind of like you're around all these. Like, the what did he say? Is like, you'll get the emails of, like, potential Mm -hmm. Yeah, potential outbreak, or whatever. And outbreak it's just notice like, yeah, every yeah. day. It's just like, yeah, what are you going to do? Well, let me, the, let me ask you guys. Well, sorry, you go ahead. No, I'll I was just up. like, it, it was when it was like in full force. Mm -hmm. I was just like, it was a nice little microcosm for like the rest of the world because I believe that basically everyone is a 16 year old. But like, <laughs> th they would go in the hallways. No one have their fucking mask on. We'd have these arrows on the hallways floor for kids yeah, to yeah. follow. <laughs> no one paid attention to that. It was just. You know, it was a wonderful effort. Yeah. But like nobody gave a shit. And I was like, there, I, there's no stopping what's coming. I'm just going to get this <laughs> shit. So, uh, yeah. Is what it is. Have you got it more than once? I think I got it before everybody. I think I got it at LDB. A lot of people Dude, think that. Uh, no, I got it that weekend. The, I'm oh, really? I am convinced. He's convinced. Were you, it's did did Harmsway play that? That weekend the fiddlehead played? Harm's way did not, but check this out. Uh my ex girlfriend, her family is in Louisville. We were there for Christmas. Like oh. we were there. I saw those pe like all the people who like do this the the show. I saw Brian, Garrison, mm -hmm. Taylor. Like okay. I saw them. I was deathly ill that whole week. Damn. Yeah. It like well, Yeah, I remember I came back from that and I I was I felt weird. I went to the local walk in urgent yeah. care and I was like, You think I got that thing they're talking about? And she's like, That ain't real. No way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's nothing. They don't even have a test for it. And then like boom, a month later I was like, Whoa fuck, Tom Hanks has COVID. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, that was remember everybody was like, Tom fucking Hanks. like what do we do? <laughs> what do we do? Fine, and like then, the world needs to act on this because Stop everything. Yeah. And then within a year he's being hit up for having like a child sex slave conspiracy around him. Yep. And, the glove. Yeah. Remember the gloves thing? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Is he, and then, is he on adrenochrome? I, I think what? so. Is he one of those? Is he oh, doing adrenochrome? Yeah. I got to yeah. get on that, man. That adrenochrome. <laughs> I know a guy. I would not fucking hesitate. Let me ask you guys something. <laughs> there are, there are, there are legendary merch items that kind of define generations of hardcore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 90s what would that be probably the sick of it all shirt because everybody wanted one because it said sick of it all and somebody would mark or like an earth crisis basketball jersey earth crisis hate, hate the earth breathe. crisis recycle shirt was yeah, big for yeah. a while that was a big one cabal hate just cabal breathe. gear the cabal in general. Stuff, yeah. let me tell you about guys about one that defined part of my generation wait there's one more though right before yours come no right before that the Before AN zip up, dude. AN was big. The Bane hoodie, of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, like iconic everywhere. Okay, but let go. me tell you about one. If you didn't have one of these, you were a fucking loser. <laughs> the Have Heart 
Boston straight edge hoodie. Whew. Generation defining. Does that I, I can reveal what what we ripped that off of? Please. If you look at um, this is hard lore. This is exclusive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're we're gonna we're gonna let it roll here. This is All right. Huge. Outspoken survival. Boom. Just took it. Spit, spit take. Full on. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, no. That which, we took. Which one the, did you have, Bo? Which one of? Yeah. Which the, colorway? Uh, I had a black. I <laughs> definitely a black one. No kidding. But I don't. Oh, mine was green. Oh, no shit. You guys fire, had that fire, shit. I would have had ne- the fire screen, dude. I would have never Jeez. guessed that you guys were were were, were riding. I was Bro, obsessed. I Here's the, let me let me say this. I've said this before, but I was all in on youth crew everything and anything adjacent, including Respect. like post hardcore DC stuff, rights of spring, embrace, mm-hmm. like all that shit. And out of all the the straight edge shit that existed outside of like youth crew shit, Boston, like the early like last rights SSD mm-hmm. DYS like. All the Boston crew shit like blew my whole mind. Yeah, that's good. So that's good. there was like there was a zero. Like I had the fucking, I have it right here. The stand and fight edge hoodie. Like I couldn't. You had the stand and oh, fight. Stand and fight. I, I have the stand and fight one. Yes, I got the long sleeve. We've I, do you have do you have the impact demo? The band before the I band ha- that w- was. I have works. I have the impact demo, or I had it at one point, and I got it. I got it through a distro. That was related to John Caution, something with him. Oh, uh, but, we, but yeah, we, I mean, it was Bridge that, uh, Nine. I mean, you know, it was yeah. it was just like I would go on that every fucking day and find someone's Soul Seek library and then figure out what we were listening to. Yeah, you know? Straight digs. This is a council of three of the last Edgemen. Okay, the last real Edgemen <laughs> left. So, and that that's what would that that yeah, could get me. You know, be like, mm-hmm. oh, they're a straight edge band. All right, I'll check it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's 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 it's, it's a still dying. to this day. I, yeah. I feel that way. Okay, like, oh, really? Okay, let's check it out. Keep uh, talking. I want to find this this hoodie. Keep the talking. hoodie is fucking. It's hilarious. relevant. <laughs> but anyway, so you know, I I didn't hear the seven inch or anything. I came in at first LP. Oh yeah. Okay. So I come in at shin ding shin ding ding shin ding ding, and I'm like, well, yeah, of course, <laughs> of course, I'm, I want the hoodie. Glad glad you enjoyed. That was um, I'm trying to think like what. What, what, what kind of explained those like those moves? It was definitely K, but like I felt like we had, like we had like a little bit of a, a pass to do that because if you look at some early Bane songs, they're 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 heavy as fuck. They're hard man. stuff they're, for sure. I've like toured with them many times. I know the fucking discog back and forth. Yeah, so I felt like we could, you know, because I was like pretty, you know melodic hardcore in my eyes kind of guy and um but like you know they they just they offered the green light and uh i didn't think that we were gonna really uh burn too many people and also just kind of kind of gave us a something new to do that well that and like this is something i meant to ask you earlier like boston was kind of like the home of scary guys big time yeah and you're like so like I have to imagine they hear shinting shinting and they're like, "Yo, maybe we're done with half heart. Maybe maybe these are these local boys are our boys." You know, we had you know, there's a whole era of Boston hardcore that people kind of overlook, but also like kind of secretly rip off. The Cast Iron Hike has like, dude, some of the best riffs out there, in my yeah. opinion. Reach for the floor, come on now. You know what I'm talking about? You I Cast Iron? I, I Cast Iron Hike. Come on, you know I'm the only witness. Like. I took the whole bag from you know. Oh, I mean, well, I, like uh, <laughs> I always thought, blacklisted was kind of taking an only living witness. Mm, uh, they were him. admittedly yeah. canonized. Admit. Canonized is yeah, yeah. pro mortal form. I never, I like put that together recently. Yeah, actually. it is. That was the tour that we did, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, couldn't find the hoodie. Must be somewhere else. Sorry, man. Uh, I, but I oh. bought it off of Wrench the day that I met Caution and James from Harm's Way. So it was the a very, Boston Straight Edge hoodie. Very for the stand and fight one. Oh, the stand and fight one. Well, let me yeah. uh, well read read the Boston strategy. I you know, just in all transparency, eventually sold it for hundreds of dollars. <laughs> so <laughs> you got that going for you too. You know the market is hot. Oh, the, the the market I've never received from. 
Well, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, you benefit the other market. first the first wave. The yeah, second the, wave, that's mine. The, well, the yes. cheapest wave. <laughs> well, that's and that, but that's the problem, and that's why now I'm trying to we're trying to course correct that. You know, yeah, yeah. everything in the world is going up. That's why it. shouldn't why shouldn't we? Whoa, Big Bo's back. Big Bo's back. Um, back. In I think it was 2000. Fuck eight. Mm. The tour you talking about? Yeah, it must have been right because yeah, you guys were breaking that, up, right? So well, no, no, or we, were, we weren't breaking up yet. Oh, now, was it on this tour? Shit. It, it, the the blacklisted ceremony, Avar let mm-hmm. down tour, and you guys you guys were on a string of those shows, right? We were on like a week, I think. Yeah, yeah. I remember we were with you guys. I think it was like the first show that Convicted played. You were playing with Convicted, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the first show we played with, I think it was in somewhere Madison, Wisconsin, maybe. Um, yes, and it, was, it was Madison. Yep. It was the day after Obama had been elected. Wow, that's right. And yeah. his uh, his acceptance speech was in Grand Park in Chicago, right here. Yeah, right, and, right, oh, right here, down the road. I got a great story Hit for it. hard lore. Wait, <laughs> let's hear it. <laughs> so, the day after, I think it's like two days after we were in Chicago. I remember the the show it was a it was a great show. Played a great gig. Um, and uh, the next morning, you know, the spirit of Chicago and the spirit of the country was pretty good. Riding pretty, high. Riding high. I mean, Change. Like, hope. I'd like to think hope. that even the fucking Klansmen were like, it's kind of kind of cool. You know, I, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's all right. I mean, he's, <laughs> I don't want to impersonate a Klansman. <laughs> I don't want Just make do it that. sound bad. And you're fine. Make like, it dumb. I, it was like I just I remember Charlie at the the show in Madison. I think it was somewhere in Wisconsin. But I remember him just being like, he was like, "Hey, we gotta we gotta think about what the hell just happened here. What it's what it means for the country and arguably the world. Like, yeah, you know, it was like it was really amazing. And I, um, you know, just you know, I, I was everyone was like, but then you're then we are in Chicago, and so the spirit, you know, of course, you know, Barry, you know, being a senator in Chicago in, in Illinois yeah. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So the spirit was like, you know, that was like crown zero for, you know, celebration. Yeah, for good vibes. Yeah. So we had also come out of on that tour. Well, the previous summer, we had spent a lot of time in the Northwest. I like to give context for my stories, but I figured sure. this is the podcast to do You're that. You're doing it so is. good. Don't worry. <laughs> You're a natural hard lore. So we... Hard, hard lore historian. Yeah. The year and a half prior, we would, when we would go to the Northwest, you know, because it's like... North of San Francisco, there's fucking nothing until you get to Portland. And even in Portland, it was a little shot then, too, in the early 2000s. <laughs> mm. So, so like, when we would play in the Northwest, it would, it would be, like, four shows we play. We play, like, we play Portland, Seattle, somewhere else in Washington, and then... Tacoma. Um, Sp- yeah, maybe Tacoma. Spokane. Or maybe Spokane. Spokane or, and then we yeah. would do a, a Vancouver show. Yeah. But... Because everything was like kind of close by, we would stay at like one person's house in Seattle. Isn't that the um, best? Having it, a home it, base it, it for is a the weekend? Best. For almost like a week, actually. Oh, and best. our friend Aaron, who was, what was that band? Black Breath, I think he was in. Yeah. 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 Um, he worked at the Whole Foods and he had informed us that at Whole Foods, you can just sort of like take things and. No one's going to say anything. Oh, my God. Pat Flynn lies. Boy, can you. And steals. Yeah. You ever cheated on a test or anything? I did. My father was my my teacher, too. He caught me red-handed. Oh, my God. You lie, cheat, and steal? (laughs) Pat Flynn tells all tonight. (laughs) This is huge (laughs) This is whiskey in this cup. This (laughs) This ain't apple juice. It's apple juice. Um, uh, Apple juice at night would be very risky for me, just so you know. You know, Harper? it's uh, it, what it, heartburn or no? What? It's a diuretic, brother. Are you I'm a diuretic all over this motherfucker? <laughs> I didn't, didn't even think about that. I just I got two kids. It's uh, it's around, you know. Yeah, that isn't that why you give them applesauce so they'll shit themselves. I should know this stuff with two children at this point, but I don't. I got uh, you covered, brother. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> guy, I know. Come to go to Colin. Yeah. With any yeah, watch what child. happens when I eat applesauce. And then we'll <laughs> I'll pass on that one. Um, <laughs> but uh, so 
we're, we're, we spent like a, that summer of 2008, I guess we spent the entire like week just like taking food from, from Whole Foods. So you fast forward, it's like three or four days after Barry's election. We're in, we're in Chicago. Nothing, everything's free, you know, especially <laughs> at the Whole Foods. Oh. So, you know, I walk in, I'm like, all right, this, this place is probably cool. So I go into the rotisserie chicken section and mm. um, I just, I just took it sure. and I walk and I walk on out and yeah. I get out and I'm just head into the van and I hear, excuse me, sir. And I turn around, I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Turn around, he goes, hey, uh, did you get a receipt for that? And I just said, no, uh, because I stole it. And he goes, you're going to have to come with me. And uh, so he brings me to the back, and I'm like, oh. Yeah. See, yeah, see, you lied and you cheated and you stole, but, you, like, that's still a good person. You know? Yeah, you know, yeah that, right. Yeah. You know, well, God darn it, you caught me. <laughs> <laughs> and so Which I, way to jail? <laughs> <laughs> Here, my hands. Uh, so, uh, so, you turn key. <laughs> so, he brings me to the back, and there's this like, he's with some lady, and like, they're, uh, you know, getting my info down, and um, they're like taking my name, and they like take a picture of me and stuff on like a Polaroid camera. And I was like, hey, listen, um, like, I'm like looking at the chicken, and I'm like, hey, can I like, so they, they, first they say to me, like, hey, you're not allowed to come in any Whole Foods in the Midwest region of this country. And kind of like an asshole, I was like, do you think you could kind of define Midwest to me? Because it's kind of an ambiguous term. Sometimes people say Western PAs, yeah. Midwest. I just don't want to go into one and then get the news that I'm not allowed. And they're just like, shut the fuck up. And so like, <laughs> and then, I, then I say to them, like, hey, listen. I'm 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 on tour. I don't really have much money, um, but I can afford that chicken. I'll be honest with you. It looks delicious. Can I buy it? And they're like, no. So then, like, the, we have we're gonna walk you out. I'm like, oh my god, this is this is humiliating. So walk me out to the van without a chicken. So then, <laughs> so then I'm just about to get in the van, and they go, and they go, hey, and I turn around, and they go, next time, just ask. And then they gave me the chicken. Full rotisserie, ate the whole thing. Just ask. Hope. hope you know? I'm gonna start asking. Can I fucking? <laughs> can I have this? Can I just have that? <laughs> I wonder if it was the one oh, I worked buy. at. Could you imagine? It was right downtown. Um, I mean, sure, there's a lot of them, but oh it was like. God. No, I mean, if it's if it's South Loop, could you see like the skyline? Like was Sears Tower right there? Yeah, uh, yeah like you know the the parking, the parking like lot? the round parking lot where you can kind of yeah. see the car. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Of all the things in Chicago, that thing. Stands out in my mind. You worked there? That's the one you worked at, Bo? It sounds like the South Loop one. That was the, the one, one you, where... That's the one you warmed up the fish at? Yeah, Real nice? Colin's got this bit going where he's <laughs> telling people I fucked fish. I didn't fuck <laughs> fish. I, I, I just... No, don't worry about it, man. I didn't do that. Warmed up the fish. Damn. We'll see. Um, I have a, a story. <laughs> um, so we did that. So we hopped on this, this crazy tour. Half Heart Ceremony Blacklisted let down convicted and i i feel like we're forgetting a band i can't remember i think that was it okay um and this was all also it was like prime every band being like all of those bands being huge yeah the the, oh yeah yeah, big time it was good it was good it was it was very good i wouldn't say letdown was like killing it no but the three the the, (laughs) the three main draws were just like could easily headline their own show. And yeah, kill. yeah. Let down yeah. was a that was a, a nice thing you did for them. You know, bring them up. <laughs> we used we used to so Bob sang for Let Down, and uh, on a harm's way. And I, I've talked to him about this. It's so it's like not weird or anything. But on a a post on Bridge Nine, his Bridge Nine name was Bob Down, like Bob X Down Bob or something. X down. Yeah. Pleasure. And in regard in in reference to a new harm's way song or whatever had come out, he just said not into it. So he became within our our friend group Bob Down not into it, like always. <laughs> <laughs> not into it. Um, just not into it. Uh, yeah, and Madison, I remember, and all the shows were like good. We borrowed this van from this this dude who was just a fucking dummy, who drove with us. He tried to convince us that 
the the van had something wrong with it, so you couldn't go over fifty five. Okay. Huh. So the first thing that happens is is when Drew, who drummed for Convicted, gets and later played bass in Nachos, gets behind the wheel. He floors this fucking thing. He's doing eighty. Yeah. So we can't really figure out what's going on and all. Like this a stuff reverse stuff speed situation. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, we park somewhere outside of outside of um, Pittsburgh. We played the Roboto Project. I remember. Yeah. And that was a really good show. That was that was, that was a tight tight one. Yeah. Very tight, but very like crazy. Mm-hmm. And uh, Charlie got food poisoning. The van got towed. All in the same morning. So because he went eighty five. Dude, got towed. They, they just parked in did. the wrong spot. Oh. <laughs> Drew, this is in Colin. Drew and the dummy, and and uh, the girl who we were staying with drove to the impound. Got there, he realized he forgot the keys. They drove back. It was a half hour each way. Got back to where we were, and Charlie's like sick. Reaches in his hoodie pocket, pulls out the keys that he had with him the whole time. They drive a half hour back, <laughs> only to find out that he doesn't have a license, didn't have the title, and wasn't insured. And that's why he didn't want us to go over fifty five. Uh-huh. Excellently timed. <laughs> wow. Then Outstanding. the I, we jumped off in Syracuse. That was the end. The or Cuse? it was either Albany or Syracuse, and the van fucking died. Uh, Do you remember I, that? I, I I have vague memories of you guys just kind of eating shit um, <laughs> uh, a lot. Yeah, and, we did. <laughs> but, you know, Blacklisted had a lot of van trouble too. I remember we played somewhere in the Somewhere in Kansas or something like that. And the, it was winter. It was like a winterish tour, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They, it was just a real beat moment. A, a couple of low points uh, for them on that tour. We had zero van trouble. We were we were just having a great. You guys yeah. bl- blessed the world. from the top. Roman Catholic. They had you back. They had you covered, man. <laughs> <laughs> you for you you would, you confess every time you. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I mean every you know every every state every town's got themselves a good old. Catholic church in there. There's I got um, one right here. We right? just 20 feet away. We clean up every morning. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, hey, I gotta, I gotta, I remember that Syracuse show. I don't know if you remember it, but I remember it being fucking crazy. I like my, the memory in my mind was like it was totally packed and it was unbelievable. It was like the Polish Hall, yeah, or something. <laughs> it was literally called like the Polish, uh, the Polish Sports Hall. Hall. Yeah, and I've played there other times too on other tours. I can't really remember what, but there was I guess six yeah. six hundred people in like a gymnasium that That's wasn't insane. some of those very... cer- ceremony sets on that tour. I, to this day, I've I've just you know like it's it it's it's so cool seeing everything pop off for Turnstile. Uh, you know, I've seen like enormous shows, but like man, some of those fucking yeah. ceremony shows were. The craziest like, shit I've ever seen. It's like enormous remember, reactions at a reasonable size show now that where the reactions don't even compare. Yeah. 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 Uh, we played Detroit at the the, the Majestic upstairs. Mm-hmm. And during ceremony, they pulled down the like projector screen that covered the entire front of the stage. And Anthony just walked around playing <laughs> just guitar yeah. by himself in front of a white screen. And, and like... I remember that. I've thought yeah. about that visual for a decade now because it's like it was perfect and it was so fucking funny and like ahead of their yeah. time. Very very much so. Yeah, they they've they, they've always had their uh their cool performance. It was great. But they haven't okay. played a, a small little music school in East Rand. That's Johannesburg, exactly that where I wanted to come back to. Okay. Well well said. That's where so we are. So please Bring us back to yeah. After so, just real. I don't need to go through. We don't need to go through the whole routing. But after um, you leave, so second eight, LP is is way released by this time, right? Way in terms of like a year prior. Okay. We two, put it out. It came out in two thousand eight, and then December two thousand nine. We're we're saying say la vie, okay. um, which is kind of crazy in hindsight. Just it's crazy. Like a year after it. You know, it's like crazy. Kiss. I've been it's saying like a, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what we were thinking. <laughs> you were thinking, you know, this is what our we're we're the we're the gods of this shit, and 
We want to stay the gods of this shit. Nothing. Well, doing there's nothing cooler than doing something exactly how you want it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we, I mean, we like we, there, we felt right about it. And um, but the 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 fucking the here's some fun little uh, we had, we had a lot of losses in the band, a lot of fails, a lot of a lot of real brick brick moments. So here's some more context for the East Rand thing, and I'll get I'll, the, to the South. East Rand High School is the name of the school that we played in okay. Johannesburg, South Africa. But, uh, so like, here, uh, I'll be quick with the context, but like our first European tour was a, was a scene at a band of brothers and it was just, <laughs> it was terrible. It was the battle of the bulge. It was in the winter. No one showed up to our shows. We uh, are all one great band of brothers on this sure. part. Okay. <laughs> this was like, we we didn't have our first LP out. We were writing it. Me and uh, my best friend, who was in the band, we were like beefing each other. I remember there was this one moment where I was like, I just kind of like left the venue because you know we had like a little tiny argument, and I walked into this like random snowy Austrian town, and there was just like a very well dressed man uh, begging for money, and I was like, this is the bottom. <laughs> and then, like I found it. Why is this guy so incredibly well dressed and begging for money? I don't. Is, mm. What's the way of the world here? Next day, van breaks down. Mm. Uh, the one person, the one Euro guy we liked was like he was going to come with us on the rest of the tour, like throughout Poland. He was like, "I'm leaving." And he left into the winter, middle of a blizzard. We never saw him again. And oh no! So then, like, but then we put out our LP and we go to do our second European tour, and it was just us, and it was in the winter, and again, it was just us. And it was in the winter where most bands don't really typically tour in Europe. And we fucking killed it. We sold out of all of our merch within like three shows out of like eight wow. shows. And we, we, we brought a fucking shit ton too, but not too much. So we look at that perspective and we're like, all right, cool. We're going we're gonna to fucking destroy next time, you know, merch wise when we go back to Europe. And the second time we went back to Europe, it was with Bane and a couple of the shows were some Gorilla Biscuit reunion shows. We were like, and it was like a month and a half long. Mm. So we were using, I, I was doing the launch. This is like one of the few times I messed up with the merch orders. But mm. so I'm thinking, you know, like we killed it on an eight day tour in Europe in the middle of the winter when, you know, no one's going to shows. We ran out of merch in three days. Now the record's really set in. Our fan base must have only grown from now. Plus we're going to be <laughs> with Bane and we're doing GB reunion shows. We're going to, we got to order fucking mountains of merch absolutely and boy we did we had 15 body bags completely fucking filled with merch each Holy one shit each one weighed 100 pounds i packed every single one of them the night before we left for tour every single one each one weighed 100 pounds dragged them all down so that we, cost a thousand dollars to get to europe well here, oh, oh, here's a fun little clincher we showed up to the airport and they're overwhelmed they're literally like what the fuck is this? They had never seen anything like that before, and it was getting late. And the lady just said, "Whatever," and she just no. gave it to us for free. Wait. Unbelievable! Oh. I know, but you might oh. think, you guys, I might be start going to fucking Catholic church, brother. I might start for <laughs> asking for forgiveness. I gotta be clear; I haven't really been much of a just for the listeners out there. Uh, Geographically, though, yeah, you oh got yeah, a choice. Yeah. We got it's, it's, it's just part of it. <laughs> um, but. Um, so, <laughs> so you might think that that's a domination. Like yeah. with with an intro like that for this merch store, you're thinking, "Oh, this is going to be this a wonderful the, store." This is it. This was like wow. the the most epic fail. It's, we play the first show of the tour, and I'm looking at the numbers, and I'm like, "Well, this ain't right." Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize on that first tour we had no competition. It was just us. People are buying Birch, uh, Bane merch, and then I'm also noticing that. Like, I didn't realize that we sold a lot because no one was touring in the winter, so no one had spent money recently on other shows oh, or festivals. This is summer? This is summer. This oh, summer wow. 2007. Everybody's so there. We got, we, we ordered like, it was like fifteen twenty thousand dollars $20,000 worth of merchandise. And I was like, holy fucking shit. No one, and we had this one design, like a line on the, it was like a brown long, a brown long sleeve. I remember the brown long sleeve for sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> I feel like I've seen it in Europe, and I was like, that thing is crazy. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was a little bit. But of the a, crazy looking thing is what you what en- Europe ends up buying. Yeah, mm. well, not this time around. They were <laughs> not fucking having it. So sorry. And every show's going by. And I'm like, fuck. And I'm like, you know what? I, I started like doing like things like, all right, don't sell the shirt that's selling. Only sell this, so they'll be forced to buy this. We have to get rid of these long sleeves. And euros will just no. I don't. Yeah. I don't this, need this shirt. It. Is, this shirt is shit. This is, <laughs> even in size oh, M, it's it's shit. No. <laughs> you know what the you know what a crazy move that I don't think I've ever even talked about on the show with European doing merch in Europe is when like you have a long sleeve and a short sleeve. They'll ask for the long sleeve in short sleeve form and the short sleeve. And like, they'll be like, do you have this in long sleeve? And oh, well, yeah. No? Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm good. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, this is the... Come back. Come back. Uh. <laughs> so, Cut them off. Yeah. So, so, like, that whole tour goes by, and it must have been, like, on those long sleeves alone, like a, I don't know, $7,000 loss. Oh. Because it was long sleeve, had, like, a print on the side, the yeah. front, yeah. and the back, multiple colors. I was just like an idiot. Completely fucked that one up. So that summer 2007, we come back to Europe like six or seven more times, rather for like one-offs or for like week-long tours or for full-length tours. And we left them in Slovenia. A roadie just took them into Slovenia. And each of those times we came back, like she couldn't like bring like seven merch bags herself right. in her car. And like, so we're like, oh, fuck. So then it's like the last tour before we go to South Africa – it's our last European tour. Like, we have to get these merch bags. And even on that last tour, we're announcing we're breaking up. The shows are, like, totally sold out. Like, everywhere we're going, we still couldn't fucking sell any of those shirts. We we're, like, bits and pieces. So we get down to, like, having, like, maybe, like, three or four of these completely full merch bags. We get to, we get to South Africa, and, like, we, we're, like, we're playing these tiny shows, and, like, you know, like, we finished all the shows that we were scheduled to play and then we had like two or three days off and i say that to the dude you know booking the show like you know south africa is like the history is fucking crazy mm-hmm. like I, it, you know the the dutch go there they they inhabit it for like two like 150 200 years and then the british come in and kick out the dutch and then like but by that point it's like you have like these white europeans who are or ancestors of white europeans we're like we're fucking from here yeah yeah and then like yeah you have the the indigenous africans are like no you're fucking oh, not yeah. double mm-hmm. colonization it's it, and it, it, it's so crazy so like you know and then within like our lifetime it was like this hardcore apartheid separate racial segregation system like, extremely violent so like it ain't like like in this country it ain't like they've like figured shit out so like we played two white kids in in in, in south africa so and, fucking weird. and i remember i was just we were remar- our, the shows were cool and like the people the kids that we played to were like you know they're like really anti-racist kids they were like on the right side of things and just trying to figure things out and do right by the world of course and it, it was cool but i was just sort of saying i was like you know it'll be interesting to say that like um you know when people ask like oh how is south africa i'm like you know, uh, it was cool, but we we played to zero black people in on the Crazy. continent of Africa. Like, <laughs> and so the dude who was like organized our shows, he's like, he's like, I understand what you mean, and he explains the history of the of the racial segregation and whatnot. And I was like, yeah, I totally get it. I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm just, you know, that's a feature of this of this country. And he goes, you know what we can do? My next door neighbor is a principal at uh, like an all black. This- Music this school. is all I've ever wanted yeah, to know about. This is fat. I, I just need you to know the how the world is burning. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So like, so and he's like, you know, here's what we can do. Like, um, I can give him a call, and you can, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk to him, see what he says. And so he so he comes back. And he says like, why don't you guys like kind of come by the school, and we'll meet you in person. And we would have had still like two more days off after this. And then so like and then the principal will make a decision you know if he thinks it's right because it's a school and like yeah. you know maybe you could play there play in a classroom it's like some cross cultural connections so we meet we go into this like tiny little classroom 
like a very tiny classroom and we meet these like orchestra players, jazz musicians. And they're just like, we're seeing them play. And we're like, you know, they're like real fucking musicians. Not like five assholes who can like play power chords. Power chords. Yeah. Scream. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. so like, you know, we're like, wow, like you guys are pretty cool. And so he, the kid tells us like, oh, the principal's still like, yeah, you guys come in, just, you know, play a song in a classroom and it'd be like a nice human moment here of just exchanging like music one side of music to the other yeah. it's like oh that's pretty cool so then we <laughs> we show up the next day and they bring us in an auditorium and there's like you know like a hundred chairs set up and there's like a kind of a big stage and i'm like oh <laughs> well that's in a tiny little classroom this, it looks this like, evolved yeah <laughs> it looks like there's an audience too what this ain't what i signed up for but yeah. so then then their school band plays uh and we were to play after them and like i'll basically at this point in my life like i'll go on i'll like fiddlehead's uh opening for turnstile um in at one of the at their boston gig and after this experience i would happily play after turnstile as with any of my bands mm -hmm. because I've already dealt with this experience having to play after this band from the East Rand Music School in <laughs> South, South Africa. Like it ain't going to be a, harder than that. Like, anywhere. so I'm watching them. I mean, I, I'm sure we've all been there where we're like watching the band playing before us. So we're like, oh, fucking fuck. Oh, yeah, this boy. is just going to suck so much cock. Like we're in the wrong place. And <laughs> let's just leave right now. No one's even going to yeah. watch. It's going to be humiliating. So like, that's how I'm feeling watching this band play. But it had the added tone of this kind of like, ignorant white american man you know who's like all right like well let's show you how it's really done like yeah they had all yeah, these yeah. terrible tones that i'm like completely aware of and i'm like i just can't bear it and they're gonna they're gonna sit there and they're gonna fucking laugh at us and they're gonna be like this band of idiots fucking <laughs> suck because when their band was playing it was real jazz yeah and like I don't know if you've ever been to like a real jazz show, mm -hmm. but the first time I went to a, like a real jazz show in Boston, it reminded me of the first time I went to a hardcore show because there was a there was a coded language. People were like, yeah, and like clapping at a time. I didn't understand why they were clapping. Like when at my first hardcore show, I was like, I can't believe people are singing along to this. This isn't like a mainstream radio band. Mm -hmm. So it was like this whole like culture and like it's all this improv stuff. One person takes the lead, walks it back, and you pass it off, and it's unspoken. It's far more complex is then in i think what we do in hardcore i won't even go near it because like i just like you you just have to be totally immersed in it and this is what these like 10th graders are doing no problem and then also our drummer our actual drummer who probably could play with them because he's so skilled and like you know classically trained wasn't yeah. with us and we had a yeah. fill-in who was just doing his best mr champ was that champ was no it, champ? It, it was uh alex gadbury okay. oh not he, champ he, he I... was playing in uh in in shipwreck um oh, okay so fucking uh alex you know he's doing it and he did a fine job so then we get on stage and i'm like oh, oh my god and it it was cool and next thing we know kids are like they're out of their chairs. They're screaming. They're like, ah! And like, <laughs> at one point during one of our songs, I like, shouted out their high school and they all shot up out of their chairs. They're, they're taking their red sweaters and they're swinging it around. If you watch the video footage, one kid is like actually skanking another like authentic, yeah. like bodily response to hardcore and what, and you name it. And so then, and then at one point they're like kind of crowd surfing and the principal is just there <laughs> with his arms crossed, just being like, what the f fuck that i like allow here <laughs> the kids are like totally totally just like great raging and it was it was a, it was totally great and then we got rid of we just gave all like the three bags worth of shirts to those kids and, oh, and they yeah. were like That's awesome. and and they were like fuck yes they were like i want one it was it was it was, it was like the that perfect changed their like, lives it, it, it was the perfect setup and I, I i this one kid um forget his name shit ah he goes he goes to me he goes Tell Obama I said hello. <laughs> I was like, and I was like, I oh, will. Man, I, I'll do my best. And I, I, to this day, I've said, if I ever meet, if I ever meet that son of a bitch, I'll tell him. <laughs> this kid in South Africa wanted me to tell you hello, and he's probably like forty now. But nonetheless, though, I. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> living up to my promise. It was one of, he probably lives in fucking Alabama now. <laughs> one of my favorite uh, aspects about the video, which we'll we'll have in, in the in the YouTube video for this, is mm-hmm. that like you guys aren't you're not taking it super seriously, but you're also not like laughing it off like it's not a big deal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like you're yeah. all, you, all of you guys on stage are very into it and are just like enjoying the moment. Yeah, and I think that that's a really unique aspect of what, um, even the message of what Have Heart was. Yeah, you know, was yeah. Was that's just like that, that's a good observation. We, 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 you know, it would have been real easy to be like, "Well, this is a fucking joke," and mm-hmm. and that probably wouldn't have translated really well to them. They would have been like, and there was no way that we could with. With what they 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 presented to us, it was uh, you know, and how do you had, not like, have fun? Yeah, it's so cool. It, it was it was great. It was, but me and um, like my best friend JD, he was the singer of Shipwreck. Um, they were on that tour list, and I should say that they were they went to South Africa a year before, and they were the like they they um, were the ones who kind of reported like you, you guys need to go. You should, you should do it. Wow. Um, Wow. So they were CDC. the ones, when they got to South Shipwreck. Africa, they were the ones who were, wait a minute, CDC was here before? What the fuck? <laughs> CDC, <laughs> CDC was here, flags. Yeah. CDC's going to play on the moon soon. <laughs> Are they still around? I don't know. You could be their new singer, probably. Could, could be. They've, they've, had, they've had quite a few. Had a few. So let's fast forward, and let's talk about Potentially the largest show that has the largest hardcore show that's ever happened. There's a lot in between there, bro. We got Wolf Whistle. <sighs> Fuck. Not a lot of not a lot of tour stories for that band. <laughs> yeah, all right. I remember what the shirt was. What the typo was on purpose, right? That was the game. Oh uh, yeah, Wolf Whistley, New Bed yeah. Fraud, Hark Door. Bed Fraud. Yeah, I liked that. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's Trevor Vaughn's uh, brain. That was a good one. You got you were coming out like yeah, I wasn't half hard, but now I'm now I'm silly. You know, <laughs> now I'm having a good time. Yeah, I'm now I'm having fun. That was pretty much the that was that was that, that was a little lot. conscious. You know, tr- I just let Trevor run run the run the deal. But yeah, you know the you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm I contain multitudes. You can you do. I, I can <laughs> be serious. When did, you, I can be silly. when did you discover that you could do the fiddlehead voice? Like, where did that kind of come from? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, you know, it was a little bit of an inspiration for me was uh, Brendan Radigan, uh, the rival mob singer. You know, he, mm. he's, dude, he is very talented. He's next level. He's got pipes. And yep. he he did this band called Lovely Lads before mm-hmm. rival mob. And he um, he's from New, like from the New Bedford area. And, um, you know, I grew up watching him. He's just great vocalist, could scream like no one else. And then he did this kind of like kind of like oi oi-ish band lovely lads and i was like oh damn he's like kind of kind of like singing and um he and my now wife lived together at one point in boston and uh i came <laughs> came home one day and he was blasting ignite uh he was singing like zoli like like actually Perfectly. hitting the notes and i was like oh my god and I, what i discovered is that think that he kind of came into his world of singing by way of Ignite. modeling Zoli from Ignite. Little, little side note. But, Dude, wow. that's unreal. But wow. I, I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that one. I only Quoted. said it on the public record. But <laughs> I, I, I remember seeing him. I was like, eh, you know what? Like, I appreciate his daringness. And like, mm-hmm. you know, he kind of, he's just putting himself out there a little bit and he's making it work. And uh, I don't know if you ever listen to Magic Circle, but he's, just uh He's i was like got it man like you can i i did do a i recently went to a vocal coach just because i was curious i was like i'll just kind of i just want to like not blow out my voice or whatever yeah. and like yeah and it, I, I was told like you know if you learn like two different strategies you know you'll be pretty good and my vocal coach actually got me to be sounding like robert plant like here in my office i was doing over zoom and it re- it's really interesting if you just learn a couple techniques you can really project yourself but I would say Brendan was, um, you know, he kind of just helped me go like, ah, you know, you don't have to just do just a screaming thing. And also, who who fucking gives a shit? Like, you know, so I, you know, my sister's love for like, 
really good 90s indie rock yeah put me in a, in a way of just sort of want to do that but i also like you know i'm i'm, I'm a member of the core at heart so mm-hmm. you know uh you know bands in that world specifically sam i am was always um really super influential on me with with fiddlehead and i just uh that's all sam i am and i'd say archers of loaf have been kind of like the two things that i've just been wanting to kind of chase after um interesting and thus you now have the distinct rare honor of being like the guy in these two very different bands who are like fiddlehead is getting right up there with with the heart brother it, 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 it's <laughs> cool it. It, it, it it's it's cool but i, I everything with Phil is just gravy I, like yeah. band, no, no one stress could, no pressure absolutely fucking nothing after Crazy. like after half heart like you know like some of the shit talking on half heart was pretty intense sometimes and it really was as mm. in california a lot of it there was a kind of a whole there was like it was like to to a lot of people it was like there's hardcore kids and then there's half heart kids yeah <laughs> it was crazy it and was like, real, very real thing yeah mm. totally and we i remember just being like what the and it, it was it was kind of quick and out of nowhere and like so and i remember being like yo we're not posers I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, <laughs> like we, <laughs> come on. So, but like, and so I remember I kind of got lost in just like kind of watching some of that shit. And I was like, I'm, I don't give a fucking fuck. Like I cannot live my life, you know, cre- all I really want to, what I love make, making music with friends and like hanging out in the process of it. So I just like, you know, and after that, I just sort of like anything I do is just like, I'm never going to try and like, make it you know that yeah. that that just sort of sent, seemed like death and then because like not to have art was ever trying to make it for a moment i was like you know we were pushing i think with our second record i really wanted it to kind of like stick and outdo our first record and yeah that's where i kind of like kind of got into a bad headspace and was like i think giving a shit a little bit too much of a shit about what people thought but it was a real bad time what happens brain. with art man Totally. And it was distracting and it got in the way of kind of just the, the process of enjoying it and the point. Yeah, totally. And so, yeah, everything after that, like, you know, I, well, like prior to prior to hardcore, you know, I, like, I, you know, I, my love for history and, and teaching is just like, I'd say it's, it's probably equal level with with hardcore. So um, and, and the money in the in the hardcore world ain't exactly uh it ain't, it ain't amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but teaching now that <laughs> there you go. Now you're, you're rolling in. When it. you pair them at the same time, it's probably pretty sick. It it, you know. it, it 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 helps, and and the schedules work out pretty well. I'm not like mm, I'm not off. fucking up too much, and I also like I just like my brain turns to mush in like three seconds on the road. I just eat terribly. Mm. I'm I go, I go from like having a pretty good healthy <laughs> diet to just being like. All right, give me three Baja Bless and a All right. Chalupa. You know, You're just speaking just the language of the show now. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. seems like a real. We'll get back to the, all the other the band stuff. The band, yeah. <laughs> but the, I want to talk to you briefly about history too. But we'll yeah. get to history, Colin. There's plenty of time. <laughs> what do you like to eat on the on, the, on tour? On the road. Yeah, what's, yeah, your, what's, your, what's your, your go-to, man? What are your big What are your big ones where you're like? If I'm con, if I'm conscientious, you could ask anybody in in Fiddlehead. There's typically like a fucking mound of pistachio shells. Mm-hmm. If I'm like, like it's kind of like a, I don't know, like an alcoholic's like method way of not like you know binging and just relapsing. I'll just pistachios? like pistachios. I'll just take pistachios because and just just eat them like an animal. Like I can't if you watch me in the van. I am constantly, constantly eating. There's so your some, metabolism is rocking. Pretty much, I guess. I, I, I don't really kind of, I, I don't really think about it, but like, it's I'm just fatty constantly. food, a pistachio. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah, high fat content. No Saturated kidding. fats. I always said if I won the lottery, the first thing I'd buy is one of them, one of them bags of pistachios without the shells. Oh. Shell Some, someday, dude. Stripped already. <laughs> just for me to. I like working for it. But you know when. But eventually, what will happen after the first hour is I'll finish the bag, and I'll just be like, "All right, gotta take a piss break. Let me get this." You know, we hit a, hit up a Boston market, 
Yeah, Boston Market? Nobody is, ever talks about Boston Market. Is that the first mention of Boston Market on the show? I think it is, man. No, we oh. talked about it in the fast food one because we're, we're both fans. But. Oh, L- little known God. fact, before it was Boston Market, it was known as Boston, Boston Chicken. Chicken. Yeah. Yep. Good job there. C- CTHC, brother. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I've been to Boston Chicken. Uh, I, you know, I, I just love the bell, man. If you like, I, I look at that menu and I'm like, just anything, just just throw a dart, you know, put it in. Yeah, uh, we, you know, we, the, you're 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 gonna come back on the show. We're, we, <laughs> this is that just like you're a friend of the show now. This is really solidified. It. I'm I'm happy. I'm ha- like, listen, my only friend at work left the school. I ain't got no one to fucking talk to. My wife, <laughs> love her to death. She's busy raising our children. No, no time to talk to me. You bring it's me on any time. I'll, I'll, I'll be here. <laughs> What's your Taco Bell order? Are you a, are you are you a meatman? I, I am. Think you, you the yeah. rotisserie chicken story. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I uh, the 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 context <laughs> on why I eat meat is really. Um, I was watching the No More video in high school with Ryan Hudon, and uh, we had ordered a party pack from Domino's. Pepperoni pizza, but more specifically, um, buffalo chicken wings from, from Domino's before the quality kind of went down, I think. But uh, so anyway, um, watching the No More video for the first time. Huge. And I'm like, the, the, you know, this is the moment. I really truly believe that, like, had we not ordered that party pack and I just watched the video, I would have been Ooh. moved into vegetarianism. But I wasn't. Um, <laughs> because I was eating... Delicious buffalo wings. Delicious. Dude, somewhere, somewhere, Ray or Porcel just. It's their fault. Like they, they felt, are, they felt it in the air what fault. you just said. <laughs> it's a great it. video. I don't know if you ever watched it, but like. Oh, of yeah, course yeah. I've watched yeah. it, dude. Of it's course. really just so the high refreshing. five. Are you kidding me? The high five. The don't do the, it. Head shake, man. Yeah. Mm-mm. It's so refreshing. The chasing to have. after the the meat truck like yeah. what even is that couldn't, couldn't be me yeah i'll chase my, after the meat truck too a friend, please a, <laughs> stop. A friend, stop. Please. A friend of mine has a like recording of the make like of them filming the video so oh, it's like oh, the, behind, of the live set. it's like the yeah the double of the I've live that. set that, yeah that thing's fucking awesome where they're like okay we're gonna play it again <laughs> it's so fucking yeah funny. But, it's really uh, rare that we find a you know an elder edgeman. I mean that in a complimentary way. Elder I, 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 I take it in. Yeah, mm-hmm. the I, elder uh, edgeman who's not vegan is just so yeah. awesome. So it's rare. hard. We're, we're we're exceptionally rare. But the Taco Bell order, more importantly, is uh, <laughs> most importantly been been it's been fucked up. To be perfectly honest, I don't know what TB was tr- thinking over the last few years, but they got rid of the double decker, which Dude. was my number one go to. Big Love huge loss for the thing. community, and and then then they snag the 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 Mexican pizza, and I like to I'm I'm real glad that they they listened, mm, and back. and now it's back. I actually had one the other day, just on two days ago. How about that? It was delicious. The, the toasted cheddar chalupa is also gone, this and it so was good. outstanding. So good. It was outstanding. That's how they keep the wheels. That's how they keep them, themselves in the conversation. You know, they they I, took the McRib yes. formula, and then yeah. they said we're gonna do this once a week with something else. Yeah, that's it. Dude, you know when what? nacho fries come back, it's a it's a Dude, holiday. It's a whole thing. Household. Yeah, they have no business being that good. No biz. I'm 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 into the quesarito, but if I get it, it's like the only thing I get because it kind of yeah. knocks me out. Wow, it's pretty big. No, good pretty for heavy. you, man. I'm a I'm a I'm a twenty dollar minimum order. Kind of <laughs> guy. Oh yeah. There was a guy hey. who recently ordered one of everything. Did you hear? Did you see that? Some dude who went to Taco Bell and ordered one of everything, and it was like a hundred dollars or something like that. That was it. It was like, like a hundred bucks. And then like they a, buried a him out back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess you know we can talk about the big half. Well, we can. Get, I mean, fiddlehead just, lore is 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 ever evolving. You know, so maybe that's episode we, two. Uh, is. We, we could break up tomorrow, and I'd be like, "That was a good run." But uh, like, <laughs> you did a lot. We we we've 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 played less than a hundred shows. I think we've played seventy ish shows tops over the course of like ten years. We, uh, but the percentage of 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 those that are like incredible shows has to be that's been good. You know, for the first like the first couple of years, like that band was not expected people to. 
go into get get into we were yeah we had one i think this speaks to the power of like um like propaganda <laughs> to be perfectly honest like sure uh and and just people w like watching video like zero people were going off and, and also i think it speaks to like someone needs to model activity for whenever we like, the record was out for like months and people would come to our shows and they'd be like nodding their heads like oh this is cool um and we played this one show in la it was like basically sold out and everyone stood there and was like nodding their heads and that was the entire vibe for the entirety of the band at the point and i was like this is fucking great and i guess this is just sort of what happens to music that doesn't have explicit like mosh yeah. parts and the next day we played the program and it was like tightly packed and there was literally five kids who knew the words but everyone was like tightly packed and we had two vhs cameras which always make things look way more insane it looks yeah. so cool yeah I, like yeah. and the, and it's not it's not like professionally mic i've said this to sunny i said like when sunny when hate five six was getting going i said hey you should stop doing direct to the soundboard because it dude it's not, you're it's exposing me it, it, it's a little <laughs> exposing for sure and, but but also i was like i was like it sounds like crazier when without it it, it sounds like less intense when it's plugged in direct yes. um because i grew up watching it's like, just you're listening to one mixer's perspective yeah on the way it yeah, should sound of course rather than what it sounds like live right and like and you know, like i grew up watching like the vhs cameras and like the microphone can't handle the energy so it's just like <laughs> Yeah, symbols yeah, yeah you're like what the fuck am i watching here and like it's like kind of grainy you're like it what is actually like 100 people looks like nine thousand people so you're mm -hmm. like and I, and I remember watching when things became a little more professional being like ah what the it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of lost the vibe but took the curtain yeah. A bit. yeah so then like we for this program show you know kid, five kids were singing along and it was you know, kids are getting into it, but it was tightly packed. It looks a lot bigger than it actually was. And then we had these two VHS cameras watching at two different angles. And we're like, oh, this, that was like a really cool show. It'll probably never happen again, or whatever. Then we put the video out. And then our next show that we played, you know, in Boston, which we're, we're, where we were from, and like no one would ever go off. And then suddenly, like, oh, like literally, like two months prior, people saw us and were like, all right, cool. That video came wow. out and people were like, oh, and. And I don't know if you guys remember this, but I just talked about this with Al, Alex Henry and Fiddlehead in, in Basement. There was um, a title fight video that had a similar kind of like impact. It was them playing in a little tiny barn. And I remember that video came out and then suddenly, boom, like everyone was like, we got to see this band. Yeah. And it was something, how it is. <clears throat> this is something about like a tightly packed, small, terribly shot a Show moment <laughs> just takes one beautiful moment. Yeah. Same thing happened to Gulch. It was a moment that was captured. Oh, did that? Was that the what was? Yeah, the, they had. There was this house show where they just looked fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah they just looked. And people nuts. are going off, and they just look, and they look so insane that people were like, "I gotta know what this is." Yeah, and it sat, It was shot on a phone. It sounded like shit. Yeah, so that, it's sick. That that band, they broke up. That's amazing. They did, they did it. They did it. Yeah, you they did, did that. To but them. you, yeah, that's that's the half heart model. You killed Gulch, <laughs> respectfully. You know. No, I, I was like, I was like, this band's breaking up. They're like on top of the game. Like that's that's that. Oh, that's that's, that's the fucking, that, yeah. that's the move. But they're gonna live in infamy. And, and if they, should they choose to ever like you know play another show again, you know, it, like people will, people will respond. You know, it and, could be to ten thousand people. Yes. Which brings us to so 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 segue segue <laughs> is is there a larger non fest gathering for a hardcore band? There can't be ever. You you, you know I don't know. It was just a show. That was what we wanted to do. Um, yep. We weren't supposed to play Sound and Fury, um, but we, you know, it was just timing wise. Like you know, we were you know, we wanted to do just shows. Um, and our California show sold out super quick. And so we're like, all right, we'll, we'll make like a second show and that'll be part of Sound Free. But we really just wanted to play shows. Um, and we, we really didn't think for perspective, the night, um, like the week before we were going to announce 
everything for like five days or something like that. Uh, the original, we were going to just do our Boston show where we did our last show, which holds yeah. like uh, about 1,500, 2,000 people. And then they pulled out and we were like, ah, all right, fuck, what are we going to do? And then we were like, what if we just did it, you know, downstairs Middle East, which holds like 500 people? Oh, my God. We, the, like, hand to God, it's not false modesty. Like, we were just like, we don't know how people will fucking respond to this. You would have had to do a month. You would have had to do a month long <laughs> residency. Yeah, <laughs> residency. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I'd rather die. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, we were like, maybe we'll just do it there. And we're like, all right. But a couple months prior, and I was really worried about it because... Um, Knocked Loose had played uh, the downstairs Palladium. Palladium. Big yeah. deal. Big and deal. They sold it out. They sold it out. And I was like, oh, fuck. If we do a reunion and we don't sell out the downstairs Palladium, you know, in a day and age in which, which like, you know, Knocked Loose did, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of feel bad about myself a little bit. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, n- n- like, not because of them or anything like that, no, but just no, like, no, not at all. we can't really, like, hang or something like that and it's just not what we wanted and so like we announced it and then um it just just sold really fucking quickly and i think i think the i think the announcement out of nowhere coupled with um coupled with like in three days we're gonna do like people had like a countdown so it was like it, it just generated hype and bob and riley and uh nanook nanook's our european guy i don't know if you guys mm-hmm. ever Worked with him. Yeah, no, no, no. Very familiar. Um, he hooked us up. He got our connections in South Africa and China, you, you, South America, everywhere. Sure. He's 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 the goat. Um, Palladium sold out. You know, it was really just four shows. Sold out in, I think it was like, less than thirty seconds or something like that. And the Palladium oh was like, "What the God. fuck is this?" And we've never had anything sell out this quick. And they're like, "You got to do, you got to do, you got to do a second show." And um, we hate playing the same venue twice. It's just the fucking worst. That's the worst. Like, mm. it, it doesn't that kills the magic? And we were, we were like, no, no, we don't want to do that. But then the play was like, you know, we do these summer, these outside summer series. How do you do it there? And we were like, no fucking barrier. Like we're, we're, we 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 just won't do it. You're not you're gonna miss out on money if you give us a bear if you <clears throat> put in a barrier. Yeah, right. right. And. So they were like, we'll do no, like the guy who, one of the owners at the Palladium is actually like an old, like 80s hardcore dude who used to book Minor Threat in Boston or something like that. Some crazy. So he was like. He got it. He was like, all right, let's fucking roll with it. Amazing. And um, we're like, how many people can you fit in there? Like you, you can you can fit about like, you know, eight or 9,000 people in that lot. So we ended up selling, it was like pre- pre-show was like 9,000 plus <laughs> tickets or something like that. We were like, what the <laughs> fucking fuck? And then there was oh like walk-ups. God. And like we kind of lost count. Like, Imagine, oh, oh, 9, get a ticket I'll get pre-show. a ticket at the door. Imagine being a walk-up for that thing. Like it, how did they logistically know what to do? Like when do you start the door? When do you, how do they pick up tickets? It's it was crazy. totally weird. It, it, it was just, a, it was a real free curse. I think also the timing helped. Like, mm. you, you know, like it was like 4th of July weekend. It was like, oh, fucking yeah. go to Boston. It'll be a nice yeah. time. And, you know, uh, so a lot of people just sort of flew out and like, I don't know, it seemed like not too much of a hassle because it was like not in like an enduring fest. You yeah. get in, you get out. Show. And, and we wow. were, I think we were pretty explicit that like, there's like no barrier. And so that was kind of intriguing to people, but like, it, it, like the number the number's cool like i'm like oh that's awesome that's cool like my my dad would be proud you know my my mother was proud uh you know i was like this like shithead in in you know in high school who just kind of wanted to like express himself and contribute to the world positively uh mm. and all these people came out and that's really cool mm. but the thing i'm most proud about is that there was no barrier that we just we we held true to that because to us it was like we the you you're losing the like the point of hardcore and i get bar- we've played barrier shows like where we really have no control over it but like i'm it, with you it, it just like and i get it and then there's there's issues of safety but like the, the participation is the whole purpose there's a disconnect yeah totally absolutely and and so we were adamant about that we were like it's just not gonna and we we paid 
big money because the Palladium more or less kind of found out how important it was to us. And we're like, oh, you know. <laughs> well. <laughs> was, uh, so you know, we, we paid some good money to have that. And I look, it's kind of fucking crazy to think that there was a show that big, like no barrier. And it was, I think at Outbreak, they, there was like six or 7,000 people who showed up. Yeah. And that's like every hardcore person in the UK. Yeah, it was. It was a lot. I, I was there. I was like, I was like, holy shit! There's like, there's a lot of fucking people. There's here. like three thousand less people that were on my show in Boston here. That's crazy. <laughs> that's so many. Yeah, it's so weird. I remember it being a little, a little bit more. <laughs> a little and there was like, like just only like, sixty five hundred. Yeah. It's just like a regular show too. I'm yeah. just, <laughs> three bands versus all of them. That's that, crazy. That, that's the running joke that. That I, uh, the gag that I have, I was like, it's oh, there's a lot a of people gag. here. I remember there was this one show in Worcester, yeah. though. <laughs> <laughs> and that was just Vain. Was it Vain, DTN, Half Heart? Vain, DTN, Half Heart, and then, um, yeah, I think that that was it. And we had Anxious and One Step Closer who played the night before. We had them jump on because uh, they were yeah. starting a US, a US tour. And we're like, ah, oh, just jump the fuck on. And oh, no, Amu Nation. My friend Gil's Maybe. band, okay. and uh, that was really great. Gil, Gil's a wonderful friend, and uh, but Gil's also known for like, you know, showing up late, playing too long, and the crazy thing about that show is like it was an outdoor show, sure, and you know, near ten thousand tickets sold ahead of the time, and I'm checking the weather as time approaches and gets closer and closer, and you know, you can look out like two weeks ahead. And for about two weeks, it's saying like thunderstorms, July, July 6th. And I'm like, oh, no. me, I'm calling Bob Shad. I'm like, hey, man, this is a fucking problem. Like, what the fuck are we going to do? And, we were, and yeah. he was just like, we got nothing. <laughs> there's yeah. like, there's literally nothing we can do. And I was like, I guess we could like play in the Palladium like three times that day or something like that. <laughs> and he's like, well, apparently Static X is playing inside. So that's a no go. Oh. And I was like. Oh my God! No one fucking cares about that. so like it's fake Static X too. Yeah, it's not even the guy. Yeah, I know. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, so like uh, it's the day of. Day of is getting closer and closer. And there's like my my son was sick and like he was like three months old. It was like this total nightmare. And I'm looking at this and like you know my wife understandably is like you have a brand new child and he's sick. We need you to help out. I'm like. But you don't Honey, <laughs> this is 10,000 people coming to huh? see me. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the weather and I'm like, oh my God, it, this, is, this is not going to work out. And so, and then like the day before it clears up and it's like, all right, I'm like, this is going to be cool. I wake up the morning of after the first show, which was a whirlwind. And it says rain at like exactly like, when like I guess uh, DTN was like set to play, and I was like, mm. "Oh my fucking god, this is like the worst nightmare." It was like thunderstorms, right? It was like certain morning of this is gonna happen at three o'clock or something like that. So I get on my so social the whole media. day. You're freaking out about this. I was like six a.m. and I was like, "Holy fuck!" And so like I just immediately I'm on like Instagram, like you know the, the show is starting like two hours early or something like that, I'm telling everybody to do that. And it's like perfectly sunny out and somehow it worked and mm -hmm. word got out. You know, it was like, just, I was like telling like everyone fucking reposted. And, uh, so then we play, uh, and it was, I think one of the worst shows I've ever experienced. Cause it was like, or like, I, I don't mean worst. I just mean like, I didn't process any of that. Cause I was like, fuck, we haven't played in 10 years. And <laughs> there's, all, there's all these people here. And I'm like, you know, it's just like, it was bizarro. It was like totally bizarro. So you had tunnel vision the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. About other shit. It, it, like it, it was just too much to th process and think about. And I was like, I, the whole time I remember, I remember thinking not the whole time, but I remember just thinking like, how is anybody in the back enjoying this? There's like nothing yeah. to sing along to. There's no melody to what I'm thinking here. It's not even, you know, like, yeah, you pump your, pump your arm and you're like a mile away and like, <laughs> you know, like, but you know, maybe it was something to just sort of see. Uh, but, uh, yeah, anyway, to be part of that. That's uh, oh, yeah. That's I think you're, the you're discrediting day. community. Discrediting totally. A lot yeah, there. yeah, yeah. But like, you know, I, I just you know, like it was just in my brain. I just wanted wanted everyone to have a good time. Pat, Pat, leave 
Pat alone, okay? <laughs> uh, that's, that's, get, off, get off Pat's back, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a good advice. I've been, right. been thinking about that a lot lately. You're, you're do you have a, great. <laughs> do you have a specific time period in history that you're particularly into? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's, there's, there's two. Uh, there's yeah. the 1600s, like in, mm. in, in Massachusetts, actually. Mm. Um, uh, I, I live in a town that was like burnt to a crisp in this thing called King Philip's War between the Wampanoags and the, and the English. Yep. Brutal stories. The, the tree in my front yard is like really, it's the oldest tree in my town. Um, because the person, the people who lived in this house likely had type of disease. And so the Wampanoags didn't burn it down. So the tree like still stands. Oh, wow. Whoa. It's kind of like a monument to genocide in some respects because the wow. war was like a genocidal yeah, mm-hmm. action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So see that every morning. What's your favorite uh, revolution? <laughs> Haitian. Haitian revolution. They, oh, that's a good that one. one. <sighs> oh, that's a good one. Brother, so? strap in. <laughs> you got one for me? You, you, are, you are free from human bondage simply because of it. Really? Mm. Yeah. 1791, August 21st. Wow. wow. What's, anyway. what's the other time period? I'll, I'll learn about it in an Assassin's Creed game. Or something. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. it is like Lord of the Rings, that the story of the Haitian Revolution. is really? unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Look up uh, Avengers of the New World. Someone's gonna they're, do an HBO the, series on the it. The Fellowship, wow. everything. It, it, it's it's Fellowship. It's Hobbit. It's Rings of Power. You you name it. It's unbelievable. This, this story. I cannot believe there hasn't been like a mini series on it. It's just mm. insane. Um, but uh, the other world of uh, specialty is is really just like call Holocaust history. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, taught a course um, for a while on it at my school, and uh, you know, and I'll studied it a lot. And, undergrad and graduate school and it's just uh, yeah you know you, like i have like a i guess i have a sunny day like a sunny disposition on life but you know there's a lot of darkness in there you know i basically sure. trust no one other mm-hmm. than like my family <laughs> so uh <laughs> you know you, you you read some stuff and you see some stuff in your own life you know, you know there's just the human behavior the the sto- little stories of triumph in the holocaust are always like that much more um yeah more meaningful, but like, sure. uh, it's, it, it, it's just a, it's what a demonstration of like just human behavior and like, in it's crazy uh, worst form. So yeah. the ordinary people just kind of doing awful things, given the chance. And then you, you, you see stuff in, in your own setting. You're like, ah, oh, man, we're still just as shitty. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I, I got a, a copy, uh, a copy. Someone gifted me a book of the Bernal Diaz, um, journals and he was along with cortez when mm-hmm. he first landed like in the yucatan yeah and that was that that became a quick favorite of mine because it's almost like aliens landing oh you know? my god like, yeah. just two just completely different it, civilizations making contact and just like not really and like his cortez is i mean obviously as terrible as it was his whole life story is really crazy and like Burning the ships, dying, swashbuckling on a beach. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's fucking insane. Like, you could write that in a movie and people would think it was, like, over dramatic and, like, made up, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, totally. And yeah, I that, got, I, that story is unbelievable. Like, just the process of them kind of taking out the, the Aztecs. And, and the three translators and, like, how they had to, like, all, like just all the... Oh yeah, know, there was like shit. sabotage. One of the translators yeah. was like on the side and went back, and yeah yeah, 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 it's just really crazy. And then I got really into um, the idea that like Gavrilo Pritchett changed modern. Who's that? The uh, Gavrilo Pritchett. Oh, Gavrilo. I, I, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I pronounce his name incorrectly, yeah, 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 but yeah. like Fucking just changing the world by murdering the Archduke and yeah. spiraling us into. Modern warfare. And yeah, like, I got a little. Game, that's Game of Thrones, straight up. Yeah, yeah is it? Quite is literally. It? Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you think about it. <laughs> and, and I, I didn't watch Game of Thrones. Uh, I always wanted to. People kept telling me to. Was, but uh, I got a little poster in my room. It's a sign. A little it says like uh, it says it says the first world. It's like a huge white sign. Here's a little uh, taste into Mr. Flint's history class. Mm. Uh, I did this once. I do it all the time. I'm, I'm a big lover of sandwiches. I don't know if. You're a favorite sandwich. Well, more of like the sub hoagie, 
oh, world yeah. of things. Like a specific sandwich, do you have a favorite? Yeah, turkey bacon is always reliable. Oh. Italian. Um, Italian's my number two, probably. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of, like, Jersey Mike's. They've really come hot oh, on the scene. Oh, Jersey Jimmy John's Mike's. has the, the goat fast food Italian sandwich. I agree support. with you on that. We have one Jimmy John's in Massachusetts, at least that I know of. Um, I had a good time there. Um, it's so crazy to me. That's the one place that we have that I can't believe anyone gives a shit about. Can't just, get it. I gotta drive. Everywhere. I gotta drive like twenty minutes to get the one. Oh, I can't. You I can't DoorDash it. I ain't going. Yeah, as long your, as it's got oil and vinegar on it, I'm down with the sandwich. That's all I need. Yeah, my, my, Mike. Mike does it. Cubano? Does it pretty well in that in that sense. You Cubano boys. Yeah, I, I could do the mustard. Yeah, fuck that's yeah, my love. number one favorite sandwich. Really? I never knew that. How about that? All right, this poster. Oh, oh yeah. Well, like um, I did this once, but um, students walked in to my room, and you know that Steven Crowder guy that's on the internet for he was yeah. like he was big at the change my mind He's, thing. Yeah, Real that motherfucker. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he he can go fuck himself, but like the yeah, um the meme it, format It was a meme, and like the students. Yeah. I'm not like the big like. You know, hey kids, I'm into memes and I'm trying to Hello, connect. Fellow children. <laughs> fellow kids, yeah. that, that's not my vibe, but what I'm into is like promoting discourse and discussion that isn't just pure debate, but is more about like listening to the other side, trying to change someone's mind and just sort of, pers- sure. uh, you know, persuade someone with, with logic and reason. So I, I like that that became a meme that kids were using or at least were familiar with, but um, there was a big sign. Well, actually, on, there was a desk. You walk in, the first thing you see in the middle of the room is this, literally like this giant fucking sub, spicy Italian. Oh, just, it was from the local sandwich store, Nilio's, and it was beautiful, man. And it, I, I said, "Make me the biggest sub you got." I was yeah. like, I put it on one of the large desks, like the wide ones for students with wheelchairs, and we put it right on top of there. And, uh, and there was a sign in front of the desk that said, uh, "The First World War." Oh, no, a sandwich started the First World War. Changed my mind. And so, yeah, deal for the rest of the class that they had to kind of um, practice the historical uh, thinking concept analysis skill of explaining historical causation, which always says that, like, you, it's never one thing. It's always a multitude, confluence mm-hmm. of things. But um, Except for World War One, apparently. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. And so, like, you had to use their background knowledge and apply it to the framework to kind of convince me that, you know, it was like to change my mind that a sandwich did not start the First World War. But the sandwich story is in mythology. The the, the, the myth is that Gavrilo, you know, after failing to kill the Archduke in his first attempt, Mm -hmm. tried to hide and hid in a in a sandwich store and bought a sandwich. And, like and then, cafe. Yeah, yeah. and then while eating the sandwich, it was like, "Oh shit, there he is! I'm gonna go fucking try and kill him again." And then he did it, and then here we are. But yeah, here we are. Apparently, that's a big lie, you know. And um, it, there was no, there were no sandwiches in Sarajevo at the time. Oh really? I I did hear that it was like a cafe, and he was more dismayed that he like didn't get his chance. Yeah, yeah. And and it was happenstance, and then yeah, he sent us into a uh, hundred years of literal nonstop conflict in yeah. the rest of the world. Uh, you know, it's just little things. But yeah, I got real into World War One. Yeah. Amazing. It's, 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 Unbelievable time period. Speaking yeah. of aliens. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Let's finish on this. That's yeah, well, beautiful. This is a good way to end it. What you know? a genius. We just we just took a very we were very scared. We went in a haunted place recently. We saw some ghosts, ghouls. Was this at the even, thing you were talking about at first? Even fest? a goblin. Yeah. Furnace it was a furnace fest. fest. Yeah. You ever seen a ghost on tour or had a spooky experience? Yeah, it's it's, it's that Halloween time. Um, mm. Do you believe in ghosts? I mean, I feel like you have to. Like, you, you, I feel like you kind of got to. Kind of got to. The world, we're, we're such a stupid, weird product of, of, of like energy evolution and yeah. the galactical evolution. I guess you could say. I don't, I don't uh, know. Uh-huh. I, like, it's got to be something out there. Something. Mm. Um, not, not, not just aliens, but like you know, in terms of like, I don't know, I, if, fools. There's been some weird shit, you know. Uh, in when I was in high school, um, and especially around where I live, it, there's there's fucking crazy shit. All like my town that I live in right now. 
It's a battleground, right? It was burnt to the fucking ground. It like for mm. ten years oh, by the Wampanoags, the mash, uh, Mashpees, and the and, um, not the Mashpees, the Nipmunks and the Wallamanapogs. They just set it on fire because they were like, you know what? Like after fifty years of coexisting, unlike with the Spanish, it was like day one conquest mm-hmm. or like fighting and genocide. After fifty years of trying to make it work, and then the English were basically like, yeah, we're just we're gonna fucking take you out. Mm-hmm. Was it, it was it was a absolute brutal like kill or be killed type of conflict everywhere around here and then and then the english effectively won and then spent you know i don't know i'm not going to get too preachy on the history here but like you know like the, the chief of the wampanoag his name was medicom or, or king philip as they referred to him and he referred to himself he he was killed in king philip's war and then they took his head and his limbs and they they hung it in Plymouth on a tree for thirty fucking years, and but on top of that, uh, his wife and children, uh, his son, his wife and his son, uh, well, his wife was sent into the Caribbean into slavery, and his son waited in the Boston Harbor on a ship known as the Sea Flower, and he waited on this ship while the English were debating it as to whether they should kill him publicly wow. or send his ass down to slavery the debates were actually like literally months long debating which would be the more prudent thing to do yeah i wow. feel like public execution would be too catholic and too spanish so they just went back and forth it was just it's like extreme brutality and just like you know 30 years of seeing limbs hanging from a tree which is why like it, you know thanksgiving it's like this weird fucking thing that yeah it's been, it's so just seen- it's hard to celebrated you seen him here. walking around or what what's that you seen him walking around king philip yeah yeah <laughs> well no sure. that that's the interesting thing is that like they, they say his you know like his spirit's still like wandering looking for his family around this whole entire area it's gotta be gotta be it has it's to be. be and then in 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 um westport in kind of south of boston area where all this conflict happened there was this um house that was built on a uh, on a burial site, uh, a native person's burial site, people and and the house was all fucked up, always. No, one, people would buy it, and then it would be like ransacked, and be like, who who fucking broke into and ransacked it? No one could figure out. Everyone like my, the dude Joe who got me into hardcore. He had a stepfather who like, or, or, or an uncle or something like that who owned a place, and it was just always getting fucked up. So we went there one time with a with a VHS camera, and. There was this this white orb that kind of came on the screen and then stopped and I and I was the one filming. I was like, "Hey, what the fuck is this?" Just I was like, "Is just is the camera messed up?" And then it went went away. Caught an Ooh. orb. And then it came back. And then it went away. And then we were all were watching. We're like, "What the fuck is this?" And then the next day, videotape wouldn't work. Irrefutable proof. <laughs> Pat, you put any you, Pat. you put any stock into the idea that uh, Salem they were having a, a kind of fungi reaction, yeah, mass hysteria kind of thing. I think that that's that. I, I'm I'm into that. Dry yeah. air, air guy. I think it was. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Air guy. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Pat Kinlan was talking to me about that recently. I think he's gonna. Yeah, I bet he was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah this, place, this Massachusetts sucks, man. It's just so. So much terrible shit that we just sort of like the flag, the state flag, is a mm-hmm. is a an image of a of a generalized native person with a with a with a sword over it, and the flag was created like right after the public beheading of 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 King Philip, and so like the Wampanoags are like, hey, let's change this fucking flag. It's a clear yeah. like it's a yeah, clear yeah. reference to you murdering our our our, our guy. like leader. Yeah. And the the wonderful thing is, like, the state finally said, "All right, we're going to change it. Let's get a new flag." But every <laughs> every like my my high school still flies the fucking flag outside my window. Every That's like day. the Confederate flag in <laughs> in New Bedford. It, I mean, in the eyes of the Wampanoag, I'm, I'm sure it is. It's uh, but like my my school, really progressive school, they're still flying it. The governor already said we're getting a new one. Take it fucking down. Come on now. Did you get the new one already? We have. They haven't made the new one. Oh, it's gonna be so oh, sick! I bet. I bet it'll be dope because it's all like native people Duncan. making. 
Oh, I hope okay. it's just a big fuck you to, to like <laughs> yeah. English people. Or just, yeah. The giant middle finger. Hey, here's the your double flag. birds. There's your double <laughs> it's, birds. It's the dude. bassist of Limp Biscuit doing the double See? birds. <laughs> we everything comes back full around. circle. And on that note, uh, two hours and twenty two minutes later, oh, I'm gonna explode fellas. if I don't urinate. Yeah, so I got I I've, been, I've been farting this whole time, but. Uh, <laughs> Pat, this was incredible. What a, what a great chat. Hey, thanks for having me. I'll, I'll riff any time. Thank you so much. You, you hit Thank me you. up. I'll, I'll show up. I'll pop oh, in. I'll, I'll hit you up. We're buddies now. We're you're in, you're in the bunker, as Carl Beekner told me. What, what a great little teaser for next time. Yeah, exactly. there you go. Put We're in the bunker. <laughs> uh, could you do us one favor? Yeah, sure. Could you, could you say it's hard lore time? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's hard lore time. <laughs> gorgeous <laughs> thank you so much uh that's our show all right i'm gonna i'm gonna Bye. pop off right now and go to bed <laughs>